Hello out there, everybody. Manny here at Area 503, and I hope that you all have been well since our last video. Let me know how the uh, audio is out there, if you guys can hear me. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining me here tonight. This was kind of an impromptu stream, and I just kind of wanted to talk with you all a little, about, a little bit about what's going on. First of all, my last thank you video was actually a tribute piece to all of you who are watching this and who come by and who've been supportive these last few weeks while things have been awfully chaotic. Um, I was making some music the other night and I was just doing it to relax and to kind of chill out. And I was thinking about how supportive all of you guys have been and I decided to make that into a song for you um, just to say thank you because this is not something that any one person could do alone at all. Um, this is a group effort by a lot of different people, no matter whose, I guess, face is on it. We're all part of this story. You, me, Rich Goofon, Stephen Cambion, everybody on UFO Twitter, anybody who has a thirst for disclosure is a part of this story. And um, yeah, so that's where we're at right now. I just needed to say thank you for you all, to all of you for supporting me through this. Um, sounds like the audio is good. All right, well, that's a good, good sign. Let me see if I can get rid of this handsome guy up here. He is a handsome devil, though. We should have him on the show more often. But for now, you'll have to deal with my uh, scruffy mug. <laughs> so what are we going to do tonight? Um, first, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. What's going on with Who's Lou? Things are kind of up in the air as far as YouTube goes. The program hasn't been allowed back on the platform yet, but I'm hoping to get it back on there soon. Uh, because that seems to be the largest platform for this conversation. And while the freedom of speech, is, um, while my freedom of speech is being suppressed on this platform, I can't do anything about it other than to put it on other locations and to keep spreading the word manually about what's going on here and trying to get some attention to the subject and get more people on board who want these answers from this man who stepped out on stage in 2017 claiming to run a Pentagon office, UFO office, for 10 years without a shred of proof and then said, UFOs are real. Wait a minute, he didn't say that. That was George Knapp. Actually, Elizondo said, the unidentified aerial phenomenon is real. So, yeah, things got tricky right off the bat. But here we are. Um, we're going to take a look at that. Um, Lou actually was on Jimmy Church last night. I know some of you guys probably heard Rich Goofon talking about it earlier, who did a great uh rendition of the interview where he kind of did both sides it was it was amazing actually he's spot on um and he hit all the the you know hard points and topics so um you know go watch rishi if you want to see that and head on over to jimmy church's show if you want to see the, uh the interview with elizondo last night it was a gosh a near three hour interview and there was only a few high points in it in my opinion there was a couple where he was talking about uh, who's Lou and Dr. Greer and he was talking about me and well, he's not directly of course he never mentioned me because he doesn't officially know who I am remember um, but yeah he implied he was talking about me so um, yeah I guess I guess we'll see what happens with that I'm really trying to hope I'm hoping that the guy wants to sit down and talk why I don't know why he's so afraid to just answer some questions but he seems to be so um, there was a nice little short that was put out by Stephen Greenstreet on Twitter that talked about one of the things that um, Lou had said and done on there. And I'm probably going to play that for you guys here in a second because it's only like a two minute clip and it's amazing. Um, one of the things that Lou had done a few times during the show was go into what I call Woo Elizondo mode. And that's where he starts talking about esoteric subjects and you know things like higher consciousness and all this stuff that he's read in these in these books that y'all have read and i've read um same books but he starts to try to talk about it like he's passing it off like he's a great philosopher but the problem is he totally got called on his bullshit on this one. Oh, this is gonna be great i just gotta i'm gonna play it for you guys so you can see it and uh, let me share this file up oh real quick i see my flock threw a 99 cent super super sticker at me that's amazing thank you so much my flock i appreciate your support with the with the money because you know everything goes right back into the channel to make more documentaries get a better computer to do more work faster for you guys um yeah i appreciate that man that really that means a lot to me thank you um as your support does in everything on twitter on discord you know just being around it really helps uh let me see if i can find this uh oh you know what maybe i don't have it let me see i might have to go to twitter i thought i had 
gotten a copy of it, but maybe not. Sorry, folks, one second. I will find this video so that we can uh, watch it together because it's really great. And it, um, Lou is talking about a recent article um, that talks about alien intelligence and he's he's acting like it's some big new new thing but he kind of gets uh gets a little busted here because he didn't do his thorough research and just like i kind of said in in the you know i've said in interviews um lou doesn't really create or do anything full-fledged he just kind of takes tricks that he see other other people doing and then uh kind of puts his own little elizondo bow on it and is like oh look look what i can do so um let me pull this up for you guys let's see if i can share this audio let's see I might have to down. Um, sorry, give me one second. I'll grab. I'll just download it. Thought I did. Oh yeah, there it is. I do have it. Okay, just one second. I'll load it up. Getting ahead of myself here. You can tell that I've only done three live streams myself. I've appeared on whoa six or seven of them, but uh, I'm not exactly proficient in trying to do all this at the same time. So uh, here we go. Nope. Okay, I got it this time, guys. My bad. With you a headline just today with your readers that came out. Uh, and, and normally I wouldn't do this, but this is important. L listen to this headline, okay? Life Beyond. NSA warns aliens could contact humans through high frequency signals as experts warn we're not alone in the universe. The National Security Agency has warned that aliens could contact humans through high frequency signals as experts say we're not alone in the universe. A declassified document from the NSA titled Communication with Extraterrestrial Intelligence explains the various methods aliens could use to communicate. Now, this is a headline that came out from the NSA, National Security Agency. It was a classified document, but I am certain because we're now having this conversation publicly, it has been declassified. It is now in the public sphere. Now, now think about that. That's just one example of the NSA. Why would, the, if nobody in the government was looking at UFOs, then why would the NSA write a report titled, classified report, titled Communication with Extraterrestrial Intelligence. What, what's the date on that? Yeah, what's the date on that report? Oh, uh, my gosh. Well, I'd have to go through this whole thing here. Um, let me take a look here. Do, 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 do. You have to give me a moment. Um, let's see here. 100,000 light years away. Uh, you know, called the... Uh, I will have to find it for you unless okay. you want me to spend the next five minutes coming no, through it, but... Is this I'm sure one of your readers probably or your listeners right now is going to throw it up on the chat group. I, I'm, I'm certain that they are aware of it. Um, but that's a big deal because think about it. What it means is that it's not just DOD or the CIA or the Air Force or the DNI. Right. It is the NSA that is putting out that report that was classified. Whoops. <laughs> so what do you say about that, guys? Um, here's here's Elizondo trying to, to, to just woo it up and tell everyone that there's this unclassified report by the NSA that's talking about government life or alien life. And it's just his whole story is based off of the sun, which is basically like the National Enquirer. Right. I mean, like they're not exactly the most credible of news source out there. It's not AP News, which honestly, you know, how credible are any of them nowadays, I guess is the point. But you know, here's the sun and he's doing the same thing that I said in Who's Lou when he talks about things like Albert Einstein's theory of relativity and whatnot, you know, and he just sits there and tries to just bamboozle people who don't know any better or that he thinks doesn't know any better. But y'all know better. Everybody knows better. We get this, you know, like this is not that's people are acting like this is something new, but this is what Elizondo has done for four years. Um, and a lot of people have seen through it and either been bullied into silence or chased off or whatever um 
or just overwhelm, overwhelmed with the other version of things, which is that this guy's some kind of new age guru with psychic scene powers that is a super soldier and a super spy and is now a politician in the disclosure movement. Like, wow, does he walk on water, shoot fireballs out of his eyes and lightning bolts out of his arse too? You know, because William Wallace did that, right? At least in Braveheart. Um, and that was more entertaining than Elizondo. Like Mel Gibson was entertaining. Elizondo's not. Like, he's just a... a I don't know. He's just kind of, he's half baked. It's, he's like a shady car salesman that has got your back into a corner and you can't get out of the, out of the room. So he's just going to sit there and keep selling and selling, even though there ain't no way you're going to buy. Um, but that's where we're at with that. Um, I thought it was interesting. Lou was on the black vault with Jimmy church for about three hours, you know, and they talked about a lot of different things, you know, they, but they didn't talk about any hard questions, even though they opened up the interview with, uh, you know, Elizondo telling Jimmy, hey, you can ask me anything. Um, I don't know if Jimmy hasn't seen my documentary, um, doesn't know what it is. Um, seemed like he did. He seemed like he knew exactly who uh, Lou was talking about there. Um, but maybe he didn't understand the questions that I asked in it. Maybe they went over his head. I don't know. Um, because a lot of other people have seen the work and said, yeah, you've got some really good questions there. So I'm not quite sure why, um, you know, Mr. Church didn't, uh, you know, say, hey, Lou, let's ask some of these questions from the thing. If I can ask you anything, that would have been some good journalism. I don't like to watch that. Um, but it wasn't, I didn't really care for the interview because the rest of it was just, as I said, the same stuff that Lou always does goes into woo Elizondo mode and, uh, you know, tells people how cool they are and, you know, t pats himself on the back and, you know, talks about how, how we wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. And, you know, all this other just self-serving, nonsense that is has no basis in reality other than his little echo chamber of six people that are like yeah you're doing good lou so that's where we're at on the lou thing um you know now let's talk about uh to the stars academy of arts and sciences who as we all know was mentioned in the who's lou piece because of their involvement with mr elizondo it seems like it's a little hard to tell the story of who's lou without mentioning the ttsa um I guess Mr. DeLong didn't like uh, the representation I made in there with the facts that I presented because he, uh, shortly after that other drama channel that had placed a, um, a strike on Who's Lou uh, had done that, had put their strike on, I think it was five or six days after they had done that. Well, lo and behold, here comes TTSA to try to get me two more strikes and hammer me off of YouTube in an effort to squash my free speech. Uh, just the same way that a couple other people by the name of Richard Dolan and Darcy Weir done against, um, you know, uh, Rich Goofon. And um, I believe Jimmy Church had done against Stephen Cambion along with some other people. Um, you know, everybody knows that Rich Goofon and I are friends and that he's a vocal critic of Elizondo. Um, no surprise there. Uh, Stephen Cambion, all he did was host me after I put Who's Lou out and gave me a platform to talk about my work in a neutral setting where somebody wasn't going to try to, you know, paint me as some kind of evil doxing hit person, you know. Um, and for his efforts, Stephen was attacked by this other drama channel. They they went after him personally. Um, they did some some horrible things. And I'm not even talking about the copyright strikes. I mean, just going on Twitter and, and doing things that people have no business doing at all, ever anywhere I, 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 with no excuse i mean there's no excuse for some of this stuff so um yeah i understand that we'll be talking about that more as the days go on and, and the the different issues that have been surrounding this topic and you know don't be surprised if in the future i start naming names and providing evidence to support my claims and you know making taking it that route if people want to keep you know going down this path i just can't be responsible for the outcome you know, I never once wanted to become involved with this other drama channel at all. My interest is in Lou Elizondo, not some some guy who's sitting in a chat with 20 people talking about how, you know, I'm trying to, you know, do a hit piece or whatever the heck it was. Um, but, you know, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. I don't really have time for that nonsense. I have, to, I have issues with Lou. I need to talk to him about this. If he's got issues with me, he should be talking to me about it and not going, you know, around all these other different live streams and, and insinuating things about me. But, you know, I guess people are going to act the way that they are. And I hope that, you know, everyone out there is watching and taking notes. Um, so that brings me to that, uh, the TTSA again. And so what they had done is placed two different strikes on two different videos that I'd used. One was the trailer for, who's Lou and the other was the live stream that I did where I reviewed who's Lou and they tried to get me thrown off of YouTube and um 
you know, right now I'm disputing that copyright process and I guess it's going to be up to them to decide how they want to, dis- you know, proceed at this point. Tom DeLong, if you're listening to this and I'm sure you are, or your PR manager, who I believe is your sister is, you know, is listening to this. One of you guys need to understand something here on YouTube and then social media. When you come after a guy who's got 2,000 subs who did a documentary that mentioned you that you might be a little shady and you try to get him squashed, it looks really bad. It looks like you're guilty in trying to hide something. Not just to me, but to the whole wide world. So maybe I'll better think, go back to the drawing board with whatever your intent was when you found, when you manually came to my channel at the same time as all these other people were hitting my friends, when you and... A half a dozen other people colluded either on loose instructions or on your own actions to attempt to group bully, um, intimidate, threaten, whatever y'all are doing. Um, you know, me and these other people on Lou's behalf, uh, it's going to backfire and it's going to make you look like a real fucking jerks if you don't, I don't know, put some kid gloves on maybe and, and maybe act like decent human beings for once instead of just big money, politic um, one-sided conversation, uh, you know, entity, individuals, whatever. I, I, it doesn't matter. That's all my opinion about TTSA. I guess we're going to go ahead and, um, we're just going to bust TTSA wide open tonight because I've been wanting to talk about TTSA for a very long time, which is kind of what started my Who's Lou project. Cause I was wanting to do that project way back then, but, um, I never got to it. And by the time I got into Who's Lou, he, he was already on past the TTSA. So I didn't want to focus on it too much, but I did want to focus on it because I've been very vocal on social media about this company being, in my opinion, just a fraud. I mean, there's nothing about it that's legitimate. And, you know, hopefully by the end of watching this, I'll have shown you enough evidence, you know, from the public records and stuff that, you know, you can go investigate it and make up your own mind about it. Um, But and that's another thing I'm going to show you tonight. While I'm doing this, I want you to look at how I'm I'm doing this because any one of you can do what I did. You can do what I'm doing right now. If you have a computer, which we all do, whether it's in the palm of our hands or a desktop or whatever, we all have access to computers, uh, most of us. And so if you do, you can do what I'm going to do. You can go to these public websites. You can download these documents and look at them. You can You can figure this stuff out for yourself. And so I'm hoping to empower some of you with some of these skills by doing it live as opposed to doing all of my research and my work behind the scenes and putting it into a video where you never get to see the work and then the the trolls claim I never did it. Well, I'm going to do it right now with you. Let's go. All right. So before we start on TTSA and and our current process about where they're at, um, I'm going to play a, I think it's a short seven minute video that a man by the name of Tim Doyle, who has a uh, YouTube channel by the name of UFO Seekers did. Tim, if you're listening to this, um, I didn't ask your permission to play it, and I'm going to play it in a whole. Um, and I'm going to link to your channel down in the description because you did all the work that I would have done, and I can't say it any better than you, so I'm not going to try. I'm just going to play your piece, let it run, and um, don't throw me a copyright strike, Tim. If you got a problem with it, just email me, and I'll take it down. All right, let's take a peek at this. Let me add this. Oh, I should have queued that up beforehand. This is why I have so much respect for my friends who do this five days a week. Oh my goodness. I just, I couldn't imagine live streaming five days a week and having to be on your A-game every day. But uh, here we go. Let's take a peek at Tim's work here. UFO seekers. They wanted to know more about the company and if they should invest because they were seeking investment donations. So we dug a little deeper and we're trying to bring you a little more information just for you guys. So here we go, let's take a look at the video. On October 11th, 2017, Tom DeLonge announced he was opening to the Stars Academy. George Knapp followed him by going on TV and saying the company was dedicated to UFO investigations. The story went viral and other news media followed suit. UFO seekers received questions about what was going on, so we immediately went and checked out the To The Stars Academy website. 
we wanted to check out this UFO investigation company. We searched for the word UFO and couldn't find it one time inside the business functions. It mentioned nothing about UFO investigations. The only place we could find the word was where they shared a Huffington Post article of one of the members saying UFOs are real. Since the organization is a public company, we headed to sec.gov. We wanted to check out the filings. Here we can see that it's a registered film and media production company. We dug deeper into the filings hoping to find out more about UFO investigations, research and programs. There wasn't one mention of UFOs. What we did find out is that To The Stars Academy used to be known as To The Stars Incorporated, a company opened since 2002. That's what you're looking at right here. To The Stars is an owner or authorized licensee of trademarks such as Angels and Airwaves, The Lonely Astronaut, Poet Anderson, and Secret Machines. Welcome to Corporation Wiki. This is where we can find out more information about corporations in the USA. And it's here we can see that it was opened in October 28, 2002. And when we look at people associated with the corporation, we can see that Tom DeLong is listed as the president. Corporation Wiki has these nice charts to show us individuals and the corporate entities they're attached to. It's inside this chart where we can look and see Tom DeLong is attached to 15 separate corporate entities. And as we can see, the box in the orange is To The Stars Incorporated. And on the left side, that's where we see To The Stars Academy. Let's go back to the SEC filings because we need to find more information about this company named To The Stars Incorporated. Luckily for us, these filings include full balance sheets. And as we can see from the year 2016, To The Stars Incorporated took net losses of over $400,000. We find a quote from inside that says, Thus, until we can generate sufficient cash flows to fund operations, we are depending on raising additional capital through debt and equity transactions. We can also see that the book value of To The Stars is somewhere around $280,000. And it's important to note that this is the company selling most of Mr. DeLong's products. Let's sidetrack for a second. We're going to take a look at this Archive West Investments. As we can see, it's a Nevada corporation that opened in 2004. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that Tom DeLong is listed as a manager. And also inside the SEC filings, it says that the Long Family Trust is the sole member of Archive West Investments. Now let's look at the majority shareholder of To The Stars Academy. It's listed as Gravity Holdings LLC. And in the fine print, we can see that the Long Family Trust is the sole member of Gravity Holdings LLC. Archive West Investments was the sole shareholder of To The Stars Incorporated. But in April 2017, they contributed 100% of their shares to Gravity Holdings LLC. The following month, To The Stars Academy created a stock investment plan. And then in June 2017, Gravity Holdings gave 100% of its shares of To The Stars Incorporated over to the Academy in exchange for 55 million shares of the Academy. This put the Academy as the parent company of To The Stars Incorporated. Hence, taking on all its debt and any financial problems it may have. We're going to use the 2016 financials as an example. To the Stars Incorporated took net losses of $422,000. Archive West being the primary stakeholder takes those losses as the primary stakeholder. When Archive West contributed its shares to Gravity Holdings, Gravity Holdings takes on that debt. And when Gravity Holdings gave those shares to To The Stars Academy, the Academy took on the debt. So as you can see, if we invest in this company, we're already investing into losses from the past. This should make us cautious looking towards the future and the viability of this company. Here's a filing showing who owes which shares and how many. Gravity Holdings holds 60 million shares. 
The Academy also listed the par value of its shares at one tenth of a penny, 0 .0001. That means in the future, they can sell their shares for as low as one tenth of a penny. So people who buy in at $5 a share are not guaranteed that other investors will buy in at that same monetary value. Here's the plain truth. Gravity Holdings is trying to make money, and it's run by the DeLong Family Trust. They hold 60 million shares. Inside the financials, they're listed at three-tenths of a penny. Here's how much the shares will be worth, depending on how much money is raised. We're assuming that the Academy brings in $25 million of investment. Here you can see the share price before the investment is received. And here we can see the share price after the $25 million in investment is received. The share price jumps to $0.28. Cents. It's curious to note that the filings have the common stock price listed at three tenths of a penny, yet they're selling it for $5 per share. Now that's some green, and we're not talking about a Martian skin color. R&D takes huge investment, and it takes years to develop patents and usable technology. Inside the filings, we can also find budgets for what the money will be allocated to. There is no UFO research programs. It looks as though the investment will be used to make To The Stars Incorporated a viable company moving forward. So if you are expecting some type of UFO disclosure, you may be disappointed. Thanks for watching our video. Show your support by subscribing to our channel. Click that button right there. And if you want to become a patron and donate money to UFO seekers, click that button right there. If you want to watch another one of our videos, YouTube says watch that one right there. And if you want to learn more about us, visit ufoseekers.com. Well. Okay, I would like you all, if you get a chance, to go over and give UFO Seekers a watch. Check out their channel. Um, from what I understand, when this video first came out, um, a lot of people who were following this channel actually turned on the guy and attacked him and quit and stuff like that. You'd have to ask him. It's just a, a story that I heard. But a lot of people were unhappy with him, you know, questioning the story that was being given to us, even though, as you could see, he's got some valid, valid points that that company was full of stock uh, debt right from the get-go. Um, you know, it was... Once they did their stock offering, everything was set up to benefit the a class stock which is all you know i tom delong and all those guys and then you go down to the c class stock and you get into hell put off stock and then you go down to the d class stock and that's what the investors got and it was valued at one tenth of a penny when it was sold for five dollars a share so anybody who put money into that immediately lost you know the vast majority of their money right off the bat and i feel bad for them um i've been if anyone out there knows somebody who invested in this company that wants to talk about it, I'd like to get a hold of them, send them my email. Um, anyone who bought bought stock in TTSA. But um, yeah, so go give Tim Doyle a, a view. Like I said, he took some damage over this and it'd be good to get some support um, to him. So that's what uh, TTSA started as. And that takes you through, excuse me, basically right after excuse me, right after uh, Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, and uh, everybody else was over there. Um, so that kind of takes us to the 2018 time frame. Let's take a look now. I'm going to have to share this new, share a new screen with you guys. Let's see. Let's share this one. So here we are on the internet that we all know and love. We're going to go over to sec.gov is where we're going to start at uh, today. And we're going to be looking for the filings. We're going to use Edgar. Edgar is the online resource uh, that Tim Doyle was mentioning there. And, and um, it's one of the many tools that you have at your disposal to look at public forums from companies that want to sell stock, um, which is every big company. So uh, yeah, pretty much any public company is going to have some kind of filings on there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to search for Tom DeLong and to the stars. We're just going to go to 
to the stars. There we go. So we've got a bunch of different filings for the, the company. And as you can tell, they go back to the incorporation in August of 2017. And we were just talking about that in the chats, weren't we? Um, so I was off. I thought it was 2016. It's 2017. Um, they really did put the move into play. And if you'll notice the time frame, August 2017 is what? Two months before Lou quit Pet quit the Pentagon. So by the time they had filed to incorporate this company, Lou had already been working for a few months to get the three pieces of footage declassified. We've got Tom DeLong uh, over in California. Um, we've got Jennifer Lou's wife living in Encinitas, California uh, at the end of 2016. Um, heck, she could have been at Tom DeLong's house when he made this filing. She could have been sitting there with him and having dinner, you know, play with his kids. Who knows? Um, but... Let's take a look at the uh, the correspondence letter. And you can tell right from the bat that that um, this is not a stand-up company. And the reason being is, if you'll notice, there's nine different little things that they do that basically said, hey, you guys messed up on your application. This is what you need to fix. So right off the bat, you've got this kind of Mickey Mouse uh, corporate filing that... Um, maybe someone ought to be a little ashamed of, but probably isn't. Uh, but it looks like, uh, let's see, dear Mr. DeLong, we've reviewed your blah, blah, blah. Please respond to this letter by fixing all the stuff you didn't do right the first time. Let's see. Looks like they please confirm that you understand that in order to comply with rule 21, uh, 251 D three IF the offering must commence within two calendar days of qualification by the securities and exchange commission staff. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, maybe they had a scheduled date that was uh, several months out, and the and the SEC say no, you don't get to do it that way. You got to file. But uh, let's let's see what else it says here. Please qualify in a footnote to the table the offering expenses to be borne by you in connection with the offsetting, assuming the minimum maximum maximum offering conditions. Uh, refer to instruction six. Ba 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 ba. Uh, it sounds again like uh, they didn't fully describe that they understood this section of the form and maybe answered it in, it in error. Uh, okay, let's go to summary three. We note your statement to the to the Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences was formed as a Delaware Public Benefit Corporation. Oh, Delaware again. Oh, Delaware. Delaware, where Lou Elizondo filed his Never Ship Empty uh, paperwork back in 2007. Everybody loves Delaware because you can basically just call up somebody on the phone who lives there and say, hey, start a business for me, and they'll charge you 20 bucks and do it. And your name won't be on it, um, at least not obviously, which is probably what they did here, but we're going to get down to that in the bottom. Uh, let's see. So here we are, Delaware. Uh, let's see. Please expand the disclosure in your offering circular to explain how an investment in a public benefit corporation differs from an investment in an entity that does not have that status. So right away, they're saying, guys, why are you claiming you're a public benefit corporation when it appears that you're a private corporation that's offering stock? They haven't disclosed to the SEC what separates them um, you know, as a public benefit, but that gives them as a public benefit. I'm not sure exactly what all, um, you know, that entails. Is it stock, uh, stock, uh, um, or uh, sorry, tax breaks? Is it um, federal subsidies? Is it um, access to other federal programs? Does that then allow them to get their crata? Um, you know, because I don't know if, if yeah, I'm sure they can if they're a private corporation, but I just have to ask, you know, what's going on here? Why are they trying to really harp on this public benefit uh, part when it doesn't seem like they're going to benefit the public at all? And we'll get into that later. Um, let's see here. Please also disclose any related significant factors that make the offering speculative or substantially risky. What, you mean like the fact that everything they promised us is full of junk? I mean, that the that the spaceship, that the 12 pieces of additional footage, that the UFO tracking app that they promised us, and, and this propulsion system, and all this stuff that they promised us was a, is just now forgotten? Hmm, that might sound risky because when uh, investors get a hold of that or they go to, you know... It, capitalize on these promises to pay back these investors there's not going to be able they're not going to be able to they've got nothing to nothing to offer um other than the uh intellectual property which is the angels and airwaves uh music label and um any of the books and um you know other things that they have on their merch website which is mentioned later 
So risk factors, it looks like they didn't accurately define their risks, which is always something that is important when you're offering public stocks, because you need the public to understand what they're getting into. Otherwise, it's a con job. If you tell promise people a bunch of money and, you know, there's it's a high volatile risk environment and you don't come through, um, you're probably going to get in a little bit of trouble. Um, so yeah, they should provide accurate risk factors so that their investors can make an educated decision. And any upstanding above board business will do that. In fact, a lot of them will err on the other side. They'll err on the side of caution to, to overstate the risks and to undervalue the rewards in order to limit liability for cases like, you know, might come out of this, like a fraud case or a theft case or something like that. But let's see here. Please provide risk a risk factor disclosure for each of the following items, or tell us why you do not believe that such disclosure is required under this article. Um, there's three points they want clarification on. The first is your obligation under the licensing agreement to pay a minimum royalty guarantee of $100,000 each year. Now, the only royalties that I've seen TTSA pay so far have been to Tom DeLong himself directly. And we're going to get back into some of that too. But um, as Tim Doyle mentioned in his uh, critique of the business, there is everything points back to Tom DeLong. It's a circular thing where there's, you know, all the money gets pushed back into one thing. It all came from one place. It's all him at the end of the day, or his family trust is what I believe it is. It's the Tom, Tom DeLong family trust. Um, Let's see what this other risk factor is. I think that's what they're talking about here is that Tom DeLong has guaranteed himself $100,000 in royalties from angels and airwaves. And it's important to note that um, that money will be paid before any stock benefits to the stockholders are paid. They basically, the company has to pay all of its bills first. And now because of the agreement with Tom DeLong with the company of To The Stars, which is also Tom DeLong with this other company uh, that we'll talk about later, um, it's basically all him. So, uh, yeah, it's real interesting that you set up one business that you, you set it up and then you're saying basically, Hey, I'm, I'm going to give you a hundred grand a year in royalties. And that doesn't even include stock participation or his, um, salary for being a board member or any of the other compensation that he gets, such as paying for the angels and airwaves tours. Although I think he's paid to do those. So, um, uh, let's look at the next part. Uh, the provisions in your certificate of incorporation that relate to competition and corporate opportunities. So again, it sounds like in their corporate filing, Tom declined or failed to accurately uh, articulate what the basically competition was doing in a fair market, which is another piece of information that your investors need in order to make an educated decision about whether to invest in your company. Um, so here you've got two points where it feels like he's kind of misleading or they're kind of misleading investors here by not um, being fully above board about what's going on. And so uh, when you start adding that into the other points that um, uh, UFO seekers made, you see that you've already got like three strikes against this company. And, you know, as, as a friend of mine who's a international business major who's got a master's in, in business said, this is just a scam. Don't do it. Don't, don't put a penny into it. You'll never get it back. Um, uh, but anyways, let's see what the third part says. We're still under risk factors, by the way. The provisions in your certificate of incorporation requiring the affirmative vote of the holders of the majority of shares of Class B common stock then outstanding, then outstanding, voting separately as a class to approve certain matters. And we'll probably be talking about that more in depth later. But what they're saying here is that they didn't, again, accurately... Um, describe to their investors uh, exactly what they're getting for their stock as far as input to the company goes. Um, certain stocks, you can vote on certain things. Certain stocks, you'll get profit sharing on certain things. Certain stocks, you're just kicking money into the company. And if they ever do make some profit down the road that isn't used on bills or royalties or all this other stuff, you may see a chunk of that cheddar. So um, Again, that's just another third part where they're not really um, accurately describing everything to their investors, in my opinion. Uh, let's see here. Intellectual property. Now, this is very interesting. This whole gig over at TTSA is geared around intellectual property. Intellectual property are music royalties. When a band like Angels vs. Airwaves creates an original song, they own that song. 
when TTSA finished shooting the new movie, I just saw on Twitter that Tom DeLonge had finished shooting the movie. I couldn't tell you what it's called and I couldn't care less. Um, but now TTSA owns that movie and they own all the royalties for it. Um, there you go. This is equity and this is property that the company has. These things are worth money. Uh, quite a bit of money as we're going to find out later. Uh, but let's move on for now. Uh, all right, let's read it there. Let's see. Please. So they need to, you know, really define what the um, intellectual property is. Please revise to provide more detail regarding the terms of your licensing agreement dated April 26, 2017, including the parameters of the license granted, approval rights retained by the licensors, termination rights, and the duration of the agreement. I'm not sure what they're referencing there. This might have been something, I think, where Tom DeLong licensed some of his uh, things like his original To the Stars logo and things like that, licensed them to the company, which is yet another way that he's basically putting himself above all of the stockholders who bought into the company to get another chunk of money from the company before those people get paid. Because all of these are considered operating costs for the company, as we're going to find out later. Ah, yeah. God, we're flying through this. We're only 42 minutes in. Let's see. We note your disclosure on page 24 regarding oppositions to the TTS class 9 and 25 trademark applications from strange to the strange times mark. If material, please clarify the status, the status of each trademark op uh, application. So I think he's got, if I remember correctly off the top of my head, I'm not going to look it up because it's not really relevant, but I think Tom DeLong has an original trademark for his To The Stars um, logo that he started maybe you know, before to the Stars Academy. Excuse me, just one second here. Got a frog in my throat. Ah, much better. So, um, to the Stars is going to come up again because if you follow me on Twitter uh, a couple weeks back, I broke a story on there. I think I was, I'm pretty sure I was the first to report it that the TTSA website was down. And then I had gone to the, um, which actually was a tip that I think Brainiac sent into me. He's like, hey, the TTSA webpage is down. So I went over there and looked and I was like, sure enough, yeah, it is. And then I went to their uh, TTSA YouTube page and noticed that the logo had changed and that they had removed a lot of the um, the TTSA videos that were on there. You'll notice that Go Fast, Flare, and Gimbal aren't on there anymore. The original uh, press release in Seattle isn't on there anymore. Um, there's only, I think, a half a dozen videos on the To The Stars Academy webpage right now. In fact, let's just go look. Let's just go take a peek. Let's go over there and let's find out. To the stars. Yeah, so that same day that the webpage was down, I come over here to the webpage and, and look, they've only got, what, 10 videos up there now. We see Flair. Oh, so Flair and Gimbal are, are, are definitely on there and so is Go Fast. I was mistaken about that. Um, Let's see, where is the MUFON Symposium? There it is. Okay, Lou Elizondo Presents. That's on there still. The Adam Research Project's on there. Dr. Hal Hand Me Out Put Off is on there. Um, Hal Hand Me Out. Hand Out Put Off. Yeah, because whatever the government's handing out cheddar, Hal, Hal's right there like, please, sir, may I have some more? <laughs> oh, my God. How many tax dollars that guy's got? But you'll notice that the original... Um, the original TTSA press release from Seattle 2017 is not on here. It's gone. It's like they don't want to accept that um, that was an empty presser, as I called it in TTSA. But we all know. We all know that was a con. We all know that was a sham. Um, so the same night that the T TTSA webpage is down, they're reworking uh, the YouTube channel. And you'll notice they've used this old To The Stars logo. And then if, you, if we go over to, uh, to The Stars... Academy.com. Is that what it's called? Yes. You'll notice that they've changed the logo on the web page too. And, and it was down. Let me say this. So I posted on Twitter, I think it was about midnight or maybe two o'clock. And um, they, uh, uh, the website was down. The next morning I woke up and uh, they had just put the website back up again. But I want to point out a few things here, folks. One, it's got the old logo, which is not the To The Stars Academy logo. It's the To The Stars Media logo and the original To The Stars logo. Um, to The Stars Media is the other company, I believe, that handles all the merch, basically. And um, To The Stars was Tom DeLong's 
original company. If you'll go back to 2009, 2010, 2011, you'll watch interviews. And in fact, um, in the Open Minds TV clip that I play, used in Who's Lou, where he was talking about what was going on, uh, DeLong's wearing one of those pieces of merchandise as well, indicating the old company. And why is that important? Well, if we go all the way down to the very bottom of the page where they've copyrighted this new page that they put back up, you'll see that it, this page is now copyrighted to the stars, not to the stars Academy. So to so the stars has done some interesting legal restructuring, but they've made every effort and attempt to keep the public from knowing what they're doing. And I wouldn't be too surprised if we learn that this to the stars media does not have an financial obligation to the people who hold stock into the stars academy that things are structured in such a way to completely bypass those people and who knows what's going to happen to them um yeah it's it's, it's not good it's not good and i want everyone to, to, to notice that when they brought the web page back online it had a new company name and the link takes you to their merch shop you don't go to the SEC filings for the corporation anymore. You don't see the public information for the venture. You see nothing. We see to the stars computer that's got this old, gosh, that looks like what, ITS, TTS, to the stars. Is that an old IBM compatible PC? Maybe a old IBM PS2, maybe even older than that with that green LCD. So they just slapped their logo on it. How original, Tom. Just like stealing uh, or borrowing Daft Punk's Tron Legacy soundtrack for your press release. What kind of a musician takes music from another? I mean, I'd understand if somebody couldn't make music, borrowing music from other people. But when you're a musician, like, oh, that's like an artist stealing. I ah, just, ah, whatever. But yeah, so this is what To The Stars is now. Uh, you'll notice there's no spaceship, uh, no UFO tracking app, no advanced science, nothing. We got a bunch of... Um, merch overpriced merch okay so we're back in here we're done with the intellectual property compensation for directors and executive directors now doesn't that sound interesting that's where the that's where the guys who sit on the board of this company get get to sit around and pay themselves and make sure that they get paid before anybody else does because remember compensation to the board is a business expense um please revise the table on page 34 to include all of the information required by item 11 of part 11 form 1a for each of the three highest paid persons who were executive officers during your last completed fiscal year that shouldn't be too hard because on the filings i've seen they only have three corporate officers it's probably uh, uh you know tom you know his his sister and then their you know tom's wife or their lawyer or something i'm not sure but we'll find out uh we'll get into that it is interesting that they want more clarification about that because it seems like um, they have, may have been um, uh, trying to hide some of the compensation or being vague in how they worded certain things. And this SEC auditor caught a hold of that and said, ah, ah, ah. let's see, security ownership of management and certain security holders. Only person who's secure in this company is Tom DeLong. Anybody else's head is right on the block. And those poor people who, don't, who invested in it, they're the worst. Those poor guys are going to get it the worst. I mean... Please revise to disclose the natural persons or persons who have a share voting or dispositive power, dispositive, God, that's a weird one, dispositive power over the shares hold, held by Gravity Holdings LLC. Now, we remember the Gravity Holdings LLC video from the UFO, or name from the UFO Seekers video. Gravity Holdings is one of DeLong's companies where he kind of bounces all that stuff around in a circle. Um you know, so far as I know, there's nothing illegal about doing that. That's totally legal. Um, is it shady business? Yes, because people can find out and look at it and say, I'm not investing in this garbage. But when you have the media clout that these guys had on top of them, behind them, right after they came out, um, you know, you could have the junkiest offering in the world and people are still going to throw money in it. Um, I hope some of those people are responsible for some of this. Um yeah, but that's the initial filing. So you kind of get the feeling that the company was not really, um, it doesn't really feel like me, like it was set up in the most professional of way. Like this kind of just seems like some guy's Mickey Mouse LLC thing that he set up to funnel a bunch of money around, get people to invest in so he could spend it on his, you know, third childhood playing rock star. 
Um, but there's more to that in all these filings. Um, and I've looked through all these before <laughs> at depth, in depth. Um, so I'm real familiar with them. But, uh, you know, that's where you were at after the, the, the stock offerings were there. Let's go up here and look at 2018 a little bit. Let's look at the annual report. See if there's anything interesting in there. Yeah. Oh, this is just a form confirmation that they're still on the old Pacific Coast Highway. Oh, by the way, that address was six minutes away from where Lou's wife was living. Not at the time. Not till... Uh, oh, yeah, she was there. Yeah, she totally was living there. So was Lou. Yep. Wow. Uh, Class A common stock, and that's the, the voting stock on this one. So, let's see. I don't think we need any of this. Oh, is a graphic... Yeah, so there's the To the Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences logo. And I just want to take you back and, real quick and point out the two differences. And that's why I think that there's something a little bit strange going on with this company because it's all the different little logo changes that look, you know, similar to the first, um, the company names that sound similar to the first. There's that same logo again. I know there's a regular To the Stars one on here. Actually, I think it was back on the second filing. No. Nope. Hmm, let's see what we got here. Some correspondence. K-H-L-K-L-L-P. Limited Liability Partnership. That's a law firm. Interesting. So that must be who was representing uh, to the stars, perhaps. Laura Nicholson, Special Counsel, Office of Transportation and Leisure. SEC Commission. Oh, that's the rep. So here's the response from uh, to the stars. They're responding to the letter that we just read. Please confirm your understanding that in order to comply with rule two, the offering must commence within two calendar days. They say, we understand, this is the response from TTSA. We understand that the offering must commence within two calendar days of qualification by the SEC staff and the company intends to do so. So they don't tell you anything new there. They don't tell you, they're not like, oh, we told our investors. They're just saying, yes, we have... We understand this information to be true. We get that. Well, la di da. Too bad your investors didn't know that. On to point two. Uh, please qualify on a footnote uh, that the operating expenses. We have revised the disclosures requested. And they answer the same two questions as say. They say they revised the disclosure to meet the needs. Um, was it actually verified by this person? Look, and all these same same thing same thing here. We have done what you've said. We've done what you said. We've done what you said. But you'll notice. They don't actually provide the, the disclosure, the, the document to look at. They just claim that they've done it. They're just like, take my word for it. I did what you said. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're not supposed to. Maybe they don't have to. Uh, but that's okay. I'm actually want to skip ahead a little bit. In fact, I'm going to go right up to the end to the most current stuff already. Actually, wait, let's go back to 2019. Look at some of these correspondence. You get some interesting tidbits in these correspondence sometimes. We've reviewed your statement. Oh, here's something else you didn't write. You didn't do the risk factors, the compensation. We know here, securities being offered. Now, this is interesting too, because a lot of the securities that the company to the stars has is, again, as I mentioned, the intellectual property. Um, Let's see here. All of the intellectual property and all the loans that Tom DeLong has given to the company in the form of his, his company, uh, R2 Dogs Inc. I think it was 100000 to start with, but the number went up. I think he kept giving more and more money to the company, um, whether it needed it or not, um, in order to secure this intellectual property. And that's exactly what it is. We'll look at that here in a minute. But we note that your disclosure that the company will amend and restate its certificate of incorporation prior to qualification of this offering statement. Please file such amended and restated certificate of incorporation. Okay, so they're saying, yes, we believe that you're going to do that, but we need you to prove it, which is good for this um, SEC auditor. They, I'm glad that they did that because uh, otherwise we might not have got it. Now here they're talking about the stocks that they're going to sell, these class A common stocks. Now that's the stock that they sold to the public. When people say, hey, I bought TTSA stock, this is what they're talking about. 
We note your disclosure on pages 6 and 45 that the offering price of the Class A common stock is initially set at $5. We also note that your disclosure that you may offer a substantial discount on the price of shares to investors purchasing a large amount of shares. If you intend to in offer investors in this offering a discount, please tell us how this is consistent with Rule 251D3I or 2. In the alternative, please revise clarif and clarify if that's true, that you will offer the shares at a fixed price for the duration of the offering. That's because you can't offer discounts on prices. You need to make the stock offering fair to everyone who intends to buy in. And so what they're saying is if you're going to offer a discount, you need to have it in writing so that everyone can get it. And it's not just going to go to your buddies who buy a bunch. And, you know, if Joe Blow like me wants to go buy a bunch of stock that you're going to mess them up and say, no, you can't have it. Um, so the SEC is just trying to keep them fair. And it sounds like they're that um, TTSA in their initial filings is trying to do everything they can to not be fair or to, to slant everything towards DeLong. Here's their stock offering. Looks like they were going to offer 30 million to begin with, and we've covered that in the film. Um, it was five bucks a share. And as uh, Tim Doyle stated in the UFO Seekers video, <laughs> they weren't worth anything. You couldn't vote. Um, you get paid last, if, if at all. Um, you know, your debt will most likely be written off when the rest of the debt for the company is written off when it finally does go belly up at some point. Uh, sadly enough, but I guess we'll see what happens when, when, if, and when that happens, I'm not trying to say that, you know, that is what's going to happen. I can't read the future, but, uh, yeah, they're talking about their, their stocks here. So that was the securities they were talking about. And there's that, uh, one thousandth of a penny that, uh, Tim Doyle mentioned too. So you'll notice that all of the information that Tim Doyle put in his video in the breakdown about how, how bad of a stock offering this was, was all in the public record from the get go. And people like George Knapp, instead of blowing this out of the water as an investigative journalist, instead went out and bought stocks to support the company. You know, I don't think anybody blew the whistle on this when it came out other than Tim Doyle. He's the only one I found who did. Um, and I didn't have that information until I saw his video. So, um, you know, this was all right there in front of, a, you know, in, in front of everyone. And I hope that you guys are really watching how, how I'm getting this information. Because as I said earlier, any one of you can do what I'm doing right now. You just got to go do it. And you got to have the grit to not give in when you hit a dead end. You just got to keep going until you get your answers. And as you see, they're all right there. There's, there's right there, it says this stock right off the bat that you're going to buy for $5 is worth one thousandth of a penny. How is that a good, how is that good? Unless you expect it to be some kind of Bitcoin that's going to go up, you know, 10 gajillion percent, you're going to lose your damn money on this and you're going to lose your shirt. So, um, the only person who's going to make money off of this is damn Tom DeLong, And he's been making money from day one and he'll continue to make, you know, money until this, this company goes down. Or continues to thrive, you know. Um, everybody else is just set up to take a bath on this, especially all those poor saps that bought that stock, you know, because they didn't know, because they believed the hype. They thought this is going to be the next best thing. These guys are going to build this spacecraft. I'm going to get become a billionaire off of this. Get rich quick scheme, bogus nonsense, man. And, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, folks, it probably is. Here's another offering statement. This is probably has to do with the stocks, but maybe not. Oh, here's what we were talking about earlier. As of whatever date this is, oh, the year of incorporation. TTSA is not a high tech company. They're not a transportation company. They're not a, a, a application development company. They're not a scientific company. TTSA offers the services described here. They are allied to the motion picture production industry. So they're essentially saying that they're filmmakers. Cool. So am I. I got a YouTube channel. I just did a free documentary called Who's Lou? Um, I'm not trying to sell stock in my bogus company to people and get them to give me a bunch of money that they'll never get back. You know why? Because I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> and I have character. <laughs> Both. You know? Um but yeah, both are true. I do not want to go to jail and I do have character. This, um, you know, how does, how does anybody think that a motion picture company is going to bring them a vehicle that can traverse 
space, air, and water simply by engineering the fabric of space-time, which is exactly what Tom DeLonge promised he'd give us. Um, amongst other things, he promised us movies and books, and that's he's making good on that. You know, um, I don't remember them saying angels for you know angels and airwaves and music was going to be a big thing, but they did kind of hint that they would be a media company. So I guess that angels and airwaves could be considered a promise fulfilled. But um, other than that, um, every promise made by this company in their um, initial uh, groundbreaking uh, promises failed. They failed and they haven't even admitted it and said, yes, we said these things. Um, yes, we did these things. Yes, we're sorry that we couldn't do them, but our political allies didn't get elected or uh, Tom stepped on 5-2 Lou's toes and got him all mad. So he had to go running off or, um, you know, something happened. Who knows, man? Um, we don't know why TTSA went kaput over there with their little agenda. But um, as you can see, um, they are a motion picture production company. They're not a scientific research company. They're not a, um, you know, altruistic company. They're a for-profit uh, motion picture support in, uh, company. Um, I've been rambling on for now a long time now, and I haven't really been watching the chat because it's way over to the side of my monitor and i got to crane my neck. But um, if y'all have any questions, put them in all caps, and hopefully I will see them. If I missed any questions that people were asking before, uh, go ahead and ask them again. Um, again, I'm just not really watching the chat because I'm focusing on the research part here and trying to show you guys my work as I'm doing it. Again, I hope you you guys are paying attention because the next time you come and ask me, hey, is TTSA a good company? I'm going to say, get get your butt out there and figure it out for yourself. I showed you how. Go do it. <laughs> you know, Don't let me do your hard work for you. Go do it yourself. But um, yeah, anyways. Let's see. So when did... It was late 2020 when uh, Lou left TTSA, correct? I know he joined Twitter August 2020. So let's look at some of those reports and see if they show that the company is starting to shift its focus, maybe from all the stuff that they had promised us at the beginning, the transportation, the uh, UFO tracking app, the additional pieces of footage, um, you know, all the stuff that they promised us. Let's see if they're starting to at least on paper, get rid of some of those promises. And it already sounds like they were starting to do that when they named it a motion picture company. But let's see. So this is the June 30th filing 2020, which should have been their annual report for the year. Uh, let's go through this real quick. Aha, To the Stars is a vertically integrated entertainment company that creates produces and distributes original and licensed multimedia content, including music, books, and film. We measure performance of that business by profit, profit margin, sell-through rate, daily sales, revenue, number of orders per customer, average order value, average value engagement ratios, which are the number of people engaging in content or spending time on the site, user conversion ratio, customer acquisition cost, customer satisfaction and retention, repeat pur purchases, email campaign indicators, Ergo, open rate, click-through rate, and user conversion, and customer engagement, including social media impressions, interaction, click-through, and time spent on site. <clears throat> My lord, that was a lot to get out. Thanks. That's all pretty normal. All that they're saying there is that they've got a pretty standard alg alg algorithmic and... Um, uh, you know, uh, statistic tracking on their website and on their Twitter feeds and things like that. Anyone can pay for services like this. Um, you know, I think they're like a hundred bucks a month to get put on your, on your, your business or your website. And they'll give you all the metrics of exactly what they're describing there. Who's clicking on where, how long they're staying, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, this is just a long winded way of saying, Hey, we're doing what everybody else is doing. Aren't we special? Let's see. But it does actually give them a lot of data to potentially manipulate as well if you wanted to, because you've got a lot of subjective terms. I want to go back to that real quick. You've got a lot of subjective numbers like website visits and hits and things like that. And you can show a report that says that you have that information that might not be accurate. You might have a script on your computer that sits there and reloads a page for 24 hours. Um, you know, that's going to show that you have a bunch of traffic to your site, but you might not. So, um, you know, they're basically admitting that they've got a whole bunch of data that can be easily manipulated. That doesn't mean that they are, but it does mean that when we see that data, we need to take it as with a grain of salt if it's not ironclad. Um, 
But for now, let's move on to the next part. This is interesting right here. So in 2020, which at the end of 2020 or mid-June 2020, it looks like their revenues increased quite a bit. And I believe that's about the time that Tom started touring with Angels and Airwaves. And I believe before that, they had been losing money and Tom had been dumping his own personal money into the company in the form of loans. And it's not altruistic. This is not a guy who's like, oh, this is my passion. I'm just going to pay for this like I did with Who's Lou. When I dumped money into Who's Lou, I paid for it out of my pocket. I didn't set up a company to make it and then loan the company the money to make it and say, oh, you have to pay me back with any money you might get. Like that's, 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 uh, I mean, it, it, this is happens in business, but I, I want you to understand the difference here about what's going on. Um, TTSA is set up to pay Tom DeLong all those loans back before anybody else, even be, probably before the power guy gets paid, probably before their lease is paid, probably before the band members are paid, probably before all the roadies are paid. You know, Tom DeLong's getting his first, you know, and good for you, Tom. Good for you. You know, you stole yours, right? Now it's time for us to go steal ours. Isn't that how that phrase goes? Yeah, well, horse shit on that. But anyways, I, I digress a little bit. Seems like in 2020, they started to make a little bit of money, which is good. Um, uh, let's see. It says that they had a revenue increase of about 56%. The 2020 increase in net revenue, revenues was primarily attributable to a higher direct-to-consumer sales on the company's own e-commerce platform due to more new and limited edition product releases during interim 2020 as compared to interim 2019 coupled with investments in new product designs and digital advertising. So they're not saying it's due to Angel and Airwaves. They're, they're basically saying that they threw a bunch of money at revenue or at online marketing and it paid off uh, to the tune of, uh, you know, close to $300,000, $250,000, it looks like, uh, without crunching the, to the digit. Um, well, good on them. How much did they spend on advertising to get $250,000 in additional sales? Um <laughs> I sniff because I start to, something smells like it's burning. And I think it's the TTSA books. I think those books are being cooked. I don't think that they're making the money that they're saying that they're making. And I don't think that that's an accurate number. I think that they're fudging their numbers to make it look better. But I guess, uh, you know, you'd need a full deep dive investigation by someone like the SEC to come in with subpoena powers and, you know, get some records and stuff. That's outside the, the purview of a... Um, civilian investigator as myself, such as myself or you, but we can speculate and we can look at it and say, well, gosh, if all the red flags are there and it walk, you know, walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then, um, you know, maybe it's a duck, but let's just keep digging into it a little bit more. And I want to show you some of the more recent filings too, because they'll kind of explain a little bit of, of that. Um, here's another one that's real interesting. Uh, so their revenues increased because of all this, the digital advertising. The increase in sales on the e-commerce platform more than compensated for the loss in sales due to the shutdown of our retail store location in Encinitas, California. See the section under COVID-19 global pandemic below. Oh, you bet your ass we're going to be talking about that. Because right here they're saying that they had already offset any damages that they may have had from the coronavirus impact of the closing of the shop in Encinitas, California. They're already saying that the steps that they made in their business venture more than offset for that. And I want you guys to remember that later because we're going to be talking about a little program called the Paycheck Protection Program, which some of you might know what it is. And you're, I'm going to want to ask you a question when we get there. So let's go back to this first. Ooh, that really got my dander up, as, as Stan Friedman used to say, because I hadn't noticed that clip before, but I knew the part that's coming up later. And when we get there, you'll see why I'm mad. Ooh. The company's e-commerce platform includes a full assortment of the company's branded digital products and physical merchandise. We were there already. We saw what's on their webpage. It's an iPhone holder with the To The Stars logo. It's a It's a hoodie. Um, I believe they have another place where you can get all their books and, and it has Tom DeLong's old books on there. In fact, I think that's what he did was license his, his old book, Secret Machines and all that stuff to To The Stars, which again is just another way for him to get a chunk of the money before anybody else who bought stock does, you know, but let's, let's go back to this and see, As, uh, uh, where are we here? 
So their volume increased as a result of the foregoing. Gross profits increased 52% to $408,000 in interim 2020 from $268,000 uh, interim 2019. Way to go, Tommy boy. Way to go. The rest of the world's suffering through pandemic. People are losing their jobs. People are losing their homes and living in the street. And you found, you're just a, a business mastermind that threw a couple of bucks at media advertising and wrote it all out. Well, why didn't the rest of the damned world do that? If it's so easy, why didn't everybody else just get on go, go, daddy, whatever, and, and get themselves a little, you know, some preferred advertising for a couple of grand? <laughs> Oh, something cooking, something cooking good. It's the books at TTSA. The company's operating expenses consist of general and administrative expenses. We've been talking about those. Uh, <laughs> sales and marketing expenses. Stock-based compensation ex expense. We'll be talking about that more. And depreciation and amortization, which everybody has. It's like when you drive your car off the lot, it depreciates. Um, everything uh, d devalues over time, uh, which is funny, except for money, uh, which has inflation. And money grows. So, uh, well, whatever. Operating expenses from interim 2020 amounted to $2,249,000, $349,370. Dollars, which was a 58% decrease for interim 2019. So not only have they increased their revenue, but they've decreased their costs, which is where their profit comes from. That it gives you a, multi, a bigger profit. You know, if you only would have made 200,000 in profit, but you shrunk cost by 200,000, well, that's an extra 200. So you got 400,000. Good on them. Apparently, Tom DeLong's got some kick-ass business sense that did not kick in until the year 2020 because I believe up until this point, the company was losing money. Whew. Let's look at the stock-based compensation again here for just one second. There was a big article that came out that talked about how TTSA had a deficit largely due of 30-something-odd million to the stock compensation. All the employees who work there are getting paid in the form of stocks. They get options for stocks. They get paid in stocks. They get stock compensation. Whatever those total numbers were for 2020, it looks like it dropped. So they stopped paying a little bit of those stock options out, which they don't always do because the employees or the company can choose how that's handled. The employees can say, I don't choose to take all my money out. I'll take a grand here, a grand there, a hundred thousand here, 500,000 there. Um, but in this case, the stock-based compensation, compensation, we all know who that went to. It went to the board members and the employees. The list is pretty small. There's not that many people working at, at TTSA. Uh, it shows on their webpage who their above board people are and the administration people. From what I understand, there aren't many. It, it, it's like Tom and his family and stuff kind of run it. But, you know, I, we don't know. We'd have to get a hold of the PR rep there to find out. Um, and I don't think they like to t share that type of intimate information with the public. So um, anyhow... Those stock-based expen uh, expenses dropped a little bit. It looks like they only paid out a million uh, four in stock, uh, you know, options. But again, you gotta you gotta understand that that's money that could have gone back to these tax the people who bought the stocks, and they're not getting it because stock-based compensation is a business expense. Again, just like the lights, just like the royalties, just like the license that you know on Tom's products and logos. All of that stuff is considered a business expense and it is included inside of their, um, you know, their business offering here. Oh, we got a troll? Let him. Go ahead. Ooh la la, you want to come on the chat there? Hey, Gary, Gary or Brandy or whichever one of the trolls you are, you want to come on? I'll give you a StreamYard link. Who's Manny? Demay Lacaf. He's got a beautiful name, doesn't he? So long, ooh la la. Since you're just a, a toad, I guess I'm just going to block you. Yeah, so that's the doxing that I have to put up, and I don't care. I'm going to be handling all that here shortly, publicly dealing with all that. So stay tuned for that. You'll be seeing an appearance from me where I'm going to be talking about all that. That's not what we're here for tonight. We're not here to feed the little troll's ego. We're here to talk about TTSA and why I believe it's garbage. Garbage! Let's see. The above uh, decreases were offset. And blah, 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 Let's go down here. Liquid and capital resources. Let's take a look at what they had on hand. So this TTSA company that has business, uh, what, what were their revenues before? It was in the millions, right? 
not their net, but their gross. I mean, they've got, you know, a million bucks in, a million bucks out each year. At the end of June 30th, 2020, the company had on hand cash of $70,000. $70,481. Where's all the rest of the cash? Where's all the rest of the cash that this company has? Um... Is everything running running on credit? Because business credit can be, and again, credit and cash are not the same thing. If the company had this operating capital, yeah, but they keep the operating cash to a minimum and run it off of credit. And the reason that most businesses do that is so that when they go bankrupt, they can write off the debt. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, here's another big red flag, big red flag. This business is just, I mean, why would anybody, who would give them credit? I wouldn't. If I was at a bank and somebody showed me these papers and said, I want to borrow a million bucks to run my business, I'd say, yeah, about that. I want to be the president of the United States. So about the time that happens, about the time I'm going to loan you a mill. Um, otherwise, uh, <laughs> let's not get into that too much. Hellfire, my friend. Thank you for the $5 super chat. I really appreciate you coming by. You do some awesome, awesome artwork, man. Not just the stuff you've done for me, but for other people like Unidentified S4, for Darkfire, uh, uh, Darkfire Files, for Goofon, for yourself, man. And you have a beautiful German Shepherd, dude. Oh, Apollo is gorgeous, man. I love German Shepherds. They're so smart, man. Like, oh. But uh, yeah, thanks for the super chat, brother. I appreciate it. And all your support on, uh, you know, through these rough times and all, even through the good times, man. Um, let's look at this. I was talking about this um, line of credit that the company has. So we know that the company has, you know, most businesses will go to um, a bank and they'll set up a business account. And they'll get a business line of credit. It's just the same way that you do it. You go to a bank and you set up a, you know, a bank account and you build a line of credit and you get credit with the bank. Business accounts are no different. Um, they're they're exactly the same. You know, you, you do have to have an LLC and an entity, and you got to be all set up. It's not a big deal. Anyone could do it. Um, if any of you want to do it, I'll help you do it. Um, it's fun. It's fun. You get to be legit. And you're like, yeah, hey, I'm a business dude. Now I get to pay tax. Crap. <laughs> That's where we're at. You know, it's not fun. Tom DeLong did it here, but. When I mentioned earlier that Tom had stacked everything in his favor, well, here's the first part, because this business started with a line of credit. We read here that during 2018, the company entered into a revolving line of credit agreement, a line of credit with Tom DeLong, evidenced by a security promissory note. It was a 2018 promissory note. Uh, let's see, it says, from the company to Mr. DeLong, which matured on December 31st, 2019. The line of credit allowed the company to borrow funds up to a total of $495,000 on a revolving basis of 8.5% annually per annuum. So let's break that down real quick. Instead of Tom DeLong, who owns a business going to Bank of America, U.S. Bank, Chase, Capital One, any of these financial, hell, even, you know, Deutsche Bank. He could have gone anywhere, but he chose instead to issue his company a, you know, what, just under half a million dollar line of credit at 8.5% interest, which 8.5 isn't bad. That's not a bad number, but um, it's not good. If I was giving business to my, or money to my business in order to get it to take off, I would just give it to him. Um but here we see that he's loaned that to himself and in other documents, which I'm not sure if we'll get to them or not, but we'll see the structure where it's set up that all of these loans need to be paid off first. Um, let me take a sec real quick. My flock threw another 99 cents. Super, super, super chat at me. I appreciate that so much flock. You've been so cool and everyone should check out your pictures. You do the most amazing like landscapes and stuff. Like you have a really good eye for that stuff. And I, I think it's great. Um, I subscribe to my flocks channel. You guys should too. And alien girls here. Hi, Amy. I'm glad you stopped by to see some of this. There's some really good information on TTSA here. You'll probably have to go back and watch the first part, but um, it's pretty good. Uh, who else is here? Mr. Bubbles, John Raider Snake, Steve Long, The Sixth Sense. I saw Hellfire Studios. Keps is here. Uh, KPT Corrosive in the house. B. Baker, The Sixth Sense. There's been all kinds of people. If I miss anybody, I'm not trying to miss you on purpose. I'm just... Uh, kind of busy we're trying to get through this <clears throat> so we're back to the loan it looks like tom had dumped a bunch of, of of money into the company now it's set up to have a revolving line of credit for uh in tom delong's pocket which again is entirely legal i don't think there's anything illegal against this but it's not doesn't look very good for your investors because again it's just one more bill that the company has to pay before your investors see a nickel um 
let's talk about this uh, uh, this this debt here. So it says that the company is not able to borrow additional funds and they have not repaid the 2018 note and the accrued interest as of December 31st, 2019 on its maturity date. Um, so basically they're saying that TTSA failed to pay back the money that they borrowed from Tom DeLong um, on time. So they've defaulted. And I originally said that this was going to happen because Tom DeLong secured the loans with the intellectual property that TTSA has. They don't say why they didn't pay because they posted profits. They could have paid Tom back. They posted profits of $400,000 this year. Why didn't they pay back Tom DeLong? So that Tom DeLong could default to himself on the loan and give himself the $400,000 in intellectual property for however much he actually loaned him, which may have been $400,000 or it may not have been... It, for all I know, it was a wink and a smile. It could have been nothing. So he may have just got, um, he may have put that money in. I'm, I'm tending to think that he did. It shows that he did. But essentially, he put the money in there and is going to later, we'll find out in the next filing that I'll show you, is going to pay himself with the IP of the company, slowly taking the little bit of equity that we talked about at the beginning, where we said this company only has equity in its intellectual property. That's its books, that's its movies, that's its merchandise, that's its 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 web page. That's all that it has. It doesn't have a spaceship anymore. It doesn't have any of the other things that they promised us. So you have to look at the real world application, what they have physically. It's intellectual property, which are angels and airwaves, and then all the other books and stuff. And all of that stuff is going is has been used as security for the loans that Tom DeLong has given the company. So here we see that the company could have paid Tom DeLong his 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 bill. They could have paid him the money back, but they chose not to. And we're gonna find out why. Let's see. During the repayment period, which commenced on June 1st, the company is required to make minimum monthly payments of $4,000, which will be applied first to any accrued interest owing and then to principal amounts outstanding. And we all know what happens when you make principal interest on a loan. You never pay the loan off and you just sit there and you just pay on the interest, a tiny bit of the interest. You basically slow the interest down. So Tom's in great shape. Tom's making a killing off this company. Everybody who's employed there is making a killing because they're getting stock benefits and participations. And hey, Tic Tac, Corbell, come on the show. Hey, Gary, Brandy, Rob, Tom, Sh whoever the fuck you are. Lou Elizondo, come on the show. I'll give you a link. I want to talk to you. Let's talk about some facts instead of character assassination for once, eh? Let's try some facts. And if you can't argue with the facts, I understand why your petty ass has to attack somebody's character because that's all you got. Bye bye. Go make another account and come back in five minutes. Now we're going to the licensing agreement because we're done with that part of the loan. Licensing agreement with related properties. Under the terms of the April 26, 2017 licensing agreement with Tom DeLong and Mr. DeLong's aff affiliated entities, Mr. Handsome LLC and Good In Bed Music, ask, wait a minute. Tom, you have a company called Good In Bed Music? Literally, nobody who is good in bed has to brag about it. Moving along. ASCAP, the DeLong entity. So he's got some kind of royalties over at the um, ASCAP, uh, you know, which is a massive uh, uh, licensing group. Um, let's say you own a bar and you want to play music in it. You go and pay ASCAP 60 bucks a year and you get access to their entire library of music. Um, and that's what you get there. Hey, it seems like we've been hitting the 30 number cap pretty big. And I want to thank you all for coming out. It's amazing that YouTube limits me at 30 numbers because my channel is so small on a live stream. Curious, right? They're like, you don't get anybody else. They'll have to come in manually. We're not going to promote you. I love the algorithm. Jesse Peek's back. Jesse, you weren't here when I did my shout outs. I love Jesse Peek. If you guys haven't seen his channel, go out and check his work on Twitter. He does um, a great podcast there too. I don't think he has a YouTube channel, but he does some really cool stuff. Go give him a watch. Jesse Peek's awesome. And so is Amy with her alien girl with her morning updates, man. I love those, Amy. Keep those coming. Every morning, I want to see those right before I go to bed. I'm like, tag, you're in. It's like you and an identified S4 pop up and I know I can go to sleep. Um, but let's get back to this here. Licensing agreement. So 
Tom has licensed those entities. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me here, I'm pretty sure Mr. Handsome is what I was talking about earlier where he had um, licensed his previous books and whatnot that he had made to TTSA to put on their merch site. Um, clever. Good, good on him. Uh, you know. Oh, shit. Wait a minute. We missed something up here. We need to go back up. We need to go back up. Sorry. The royalties do, I need to go back up to the licensing agreement because of the royalties. I forgot to mention this. The royalties due to the DeLong entities under this agreement for the interim 2020 and the year that ended December 31st, 2019 were equal to the minimum guarantee of $100,000 and was recorded by the company as a cost of revenue, as a cost of revenue. For the interim 2020 and the year ended December 31st, 2019, the $300,000 and $200,000 respectively in accumulated royalties due to the due the DeLong entities had not been paid and are included as current liabilities in the amount due related party in the accompanying consolidated balance sheets. Collectively, monies due to Mr. DeLong under these related party transactions totaled just over one million hundred or one million twenty-five thousand dollars and nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars so close to two million dollars total um december 31st so again these royalties that they're going to be paying out to mr delong which are an agreement a royalty could be anything it can be a set price it can be a percentage or it can be a flat rate so let's say i create my alien dance music and you want to use it I'm going to give it, I'm going to say, I want a million bucks a play. I can do that. It's my royalty. I can say it's worth a million bucks or a penny. So we don't know what Tom DeLong is actually getting for that money. I don't know or what the company's getting for it. Um, yeah. So it's interesting. We're going to have to keep digging into this and following it and seeing where the money is actually going because they've claimed that they had money to pay their bills, but they didn't. And they selectively chose which bills to pay. They paid their bills to their royalties. They paid their bills to their stock participation. They paid their bills to their building managers, to their roadies, to every, I, I assume, I, I haven't heard of any Angels and Airwaves roadies that haven't been paid, but they have, um, they have. So, um, you know, I'm assuming that they got paid, but the point is the stockholders aren't getting paid and they didn't pay Tom DeLong the debt on the loan that he gave them. And I want to know why, unless it was so that they could default to give him the intellectual property, which we're going to get into in the next filing, which unfortunately is the most current filing for TTSA because it seems like they're delinquent in filing this year and it hasn't or it hasn't been posted yet by the SEC but we should have that information soon to know what happened last year let's look again at, at what was going on here net cash used nothing operating activities so in 2020 they had 234,000 down from the 285,000 in operating costs that they had in 2019 we already knew about that their investing activities is nothing. Look, $17,000 invested in 2019 and 9000 invested in 2020. It's so funny that a company that wants to offer stock to the public of $30 million to invest doesn't do any investing themselves. Oh my God, whatever. Financing activities, $200,000. Not sure where that number comes from. That might have been the money that they borrowed. Let's see, cash in. So cash used in the operating activities was 234000 for interim 2020 as composed as compared to cash used in operating activities uh, of 285000 for interim 2019. The decrease in cash and operating activities was primarily due to reduced operating costs related to payroll and marketing. What? That doesn't make any sense because they just said earlier that in 2019, they spent a bunch of extra money on marketing to... Uh, justify the uh, extra sales and now they're saying no we cut costs on marketing and payroll so this just doesn't make any damn sense man like that's like a lou elizondo conundrum right there where you got one guy saying one you got him saying one thing on one page and two sentences later they're contradicting themselves blah investing activities cash used in investing activities was 9400 bucks yeah we know that you guys don't like to take it but you don't like to give it back Cash provided by fin financing activities decreased to $200,000. Yeah, we got that. Here it says, 
that the decrease in cash provided by financing activities was primarily due to the activity of more cash from uh, due to the availability of more cash from retail sales activity. So they're basically saying, well, our merch took off, so we didn't need to borrow as much, but they didn't actually pay it back either. Come on, pay your freaking debts, man. Are you a deadbeat DeLong? Is that what's up? Am I going to find a, a group of roadies suing you because you didn't pay them? Because that's scummy, dude. Like roadies do all the damned work. I guess we'll find out. Let's see, management update. Oh, here we go. This should be interesting. In 2020, we have achieved the following. Officially kicked off our cooperative research and development agreement. Oh, we all know what that is. That's the USG Krata that they got so that they could get these leaked videos from the military and and release them improperly. Why the fuck aren't they in jail? Why aren't all of them? Ah, seriously. So, yeah, this is a CRADA, is what this is called, a C-R-C-R-D-A with the U.S. government. This is how a guy like Tom DeLong could get access to some kind of government information like he did and like he does. And has people like Hal put off working with him. Um, you know, people can Google what that is. But, yeah, they say that they officially kicked that off in 2020. I don't think that they should even have it. The government should revoke that crap, you know, because they abused it. But I guess we'll, we'll see what they do. <sighs> yeah. So here they're talking about what they're doing in 2020. Let me see if I can make this big. Oh, look at that, guys. I'm up in my live stream game and figuring out how to make this bigger so y'all can read it too. In 2020, we have achieved the following. Officially kicked off our CRADA with the U.S. Army and began setting up processes, procedures, and requirements to conduct work. But we all know that's garbage because they haven't done anything with it. What are they going to do? All they're doing is books and movie now. They're not doing the, the, the UFO. They're not going to do the flying spaceship. They're not going to do the UFO tracking uh, program. They're not going to be doing anything that has to do with sensitive information. So I really want to know what they're going to be doing with this CRADA. Other than trying to get more handouts, handout Hal is going to try and get him some more money off the federal government. Well, I guess we'll see. Our continued effort to gain awareness and credibility for UAP research was solidified by the official release by the Pentagon of three videos previously released by the company, where the Pentagon officially released a statement to clear up any misperception or misconception to the authenticity of the videos as the top branch of the military. Officially confirmed the videos were considered UAP for the very first time. Bullshit. That never happened. And I'll show you the statement right now. TTSA then embarked on a press tour to engage the public, command, uh, commend the Department of Defense, and continue to educate the public and the need for better data to research and understand the phenomenon. There's so many half-truths and lies in this statement. It's probably going to take us 30 minutes to get through that. Um, in, in the film, Who's Lou?, I post a statement that's as clear as day from Susan Goh, the Pentagon spokesperson, who clearly stated that the only reason that the Pentagon acknowledged that those were U.S. Navy videos was because people were questioning whether they were authentic as they were shot by the Navy. That's it. The same statement also says that TTSA was an industry partner and had no business releasing this information and that the videos were released to the public following improper channels, which in my opinion means illegally. So to directly counteract what Tom is trying to push through in his in his statement to the SEC here and to the public. No, the government never admitted that those Pentagons were unidentified flying objects. Sorry, that just simply didn't happen. And neither did they say that you officially released them. That didn't happen either. What the government said is these are officially Navy videos. They are authentic. The Navy shot them. We have no further comment. And to the best of my knowledge, there has not been a, a, a previous or a subsequent public statement. So Mr. DeLong, Show us some documentation to support that, that refutes the documentation that I have. Otherwise, I'm going to say I believe that that's clearly an error, embellish, or an outright lie. But I, I guess we'll have to see. Let's see. The Pentagon officially released a statement to clear up. Well, yeah, I guess they did clear up any misconception as to the authenticity, as I just explained. But they did not say that they were UAP or UFOs. Anyways, TTSA then embarked on a press tour to engage the public, to commend the Department of Defense, and to continue to educate the public about the need for better data to research and understand the phenomenon. Does anybody out there who's watching this, have you heard of a press tour that TTSA did in 220 to educate the public? Unless they're talking about the Angels and Airwaves 
tour? I've got no clue what that is. And that is just the farthest thing from reality that I've heard in a long time. So if you all know what that is, get me that information because I think that's a complete uh, fabrication. I think he's probably trying to pass off the... Um, I think he's probably trying to pass off the uh, Angels versus Airwaves tour as some kind of educational for the public thing, but it's it's not. Have you seen the videos of the show? It's like a full-on Blink-182 style production in a venue of about two to 300 people. Um, so the costs to me, from what I'm seeing, it seems like they're probably losing money on those shows or not making very much if they're making any. Um, but I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I don't see a 300 person venue, you know, at these ticket prices making that kind of money. So um, maybe we need to look into that a little bit more. And their press tour. I really want to know what they're talking about there. I've never heard of them doing a press tour. So maybe they've got some information. On that. Tommy, don't sue me for defamation, man. Just give me the damned information that I'm asking for. Let's see. What else did they do? Launched the TTSA talks. Uh, they launched the TTSA talks program to dive deeper than any source into the complexities of the TTSA mission, its programs, partners, and products. The program commenced in May 2020 with the Deputy Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and TTSA. You mean former Deputy Assistant Director of Defense and Intelligence in the early 2000s, Chris Mellon. Um, let me just correct that for you, Tom, since you seem to forget who you're working with. Engaged in a live Q&A session on Twitter to answer people's questions. Really? And I missed this? You mean Mellon would have answered a question of mine? Holy crap. I, I don't believe that. But yeah, I'm sure maybe they did. They probably fielded a few, um, you know, softball questions, but I don't think they were taking anything hard there. The plan will be a follow-up with a regular podcast series with in-depth interviews. Haven't seen any of them. I think I saw one um, Lou L uh, TTSA talks and it was Lou's that he did. And I think it was like within weeks of him leaving uh, TTSA, which I found ironic that he was doing this big thing promoting TTSA. And I know for a fact he was already out the door, man. He was already looking for work elsewhere and uh, was looking for, you know, his next play. Uh, so yeah, like I said in the video, man, it's funny how lose partners always the last to find out that there's a breakup you know hi wes hi uh six cents i don't know who else came in here lately kenneth it's good to see you i don't recognize your name all the way from atlanta good for you thanks for joining us ken um paul cargo's here everybody else i think i got on a shout out earlier i'm just trying to give you guys a a woot woot for coming by and again the point of this uh piece here is not for me to do all the work and tell you what's here it's to do the work and show you how it's done so you can go and do it yourself. I mean, it's here. All these tools are here. You can do all this. So I want you guys to learn what I'm doing so you can go and do it because there's, you should be empowered to go and look this information up for yourself. You know, the next time a company like Tom or to the stars comes along, you know, you can look into it and, um, I missed a lot of questions. I'm so sorry, guys. I'll try to roll up and see them. I just don't want to kill things while I'm sitting here. If, if I missed your questions, repeat them. I'll tell you what. I'll go over to the chat for just a minute. Let's stop on this. If I missed any questions, go ahead and put them in all caps. And for the next two minutes or so, I'll just take those questions and try to answer them for you. I'm going to have to look into this one here, this agreement with True Clear Global to include additional technology products, including the Illustro Rapid Response Delay System. I wonder if that is their uh, UFO tracking program that they were talking about. Let's go take a pixie. Who's the wrench army? I keep seeing that. Go wrench army. Is that that one guy's chat room where they're all wrenches? Go wrench army. You know what they call that in YouTube outside of ufology when you do that? It's called a wrench chat, and it's for drama channels that are constantly trolling other people. It's so funny to see this in ufology because we, we have never seen a drama channel in ufology. And go go figure, this kid's going to, I'm sorry, this guy's going to be the worst. Technology Spotlight, like Illustro Rapid Response Display System. Huh? To the Stars Academy is committed to mobilizing advanced technology that could potentially benefit society today as much as the generations of tomorrow. 
Through our cooperative marketing research agreement with TrueClear Global, our goal is to bring high-tech impact solutions to the like the Illustro Rapid Response Delay System to federal, state, and local agencies to help the ever-evolving efforts to effectively engage citizens and communicate critical information. What? Why the hell is Tom DeLong getting involved in some kind of public emergency address system thing? Am I reading this right? Am I freaking nuts? Am I in the Twilight Zone? Is this the Mandela effect? Are we talking about the same Tom? De- I need to Google this. Hang on. Are we talking about the same Tom DeLong? Tom DeLong with an E. The guy from Blink-182. He now wants to be in charge of the emergency like broadcast system? Every... Uh, Wait a minute. Every Elestro vehicle is equipped with three sides of high-definition LED screens that can transform like a like a GoBot, like a transformer, into a 35-foot-wide display suspended 18 feet in the air. The directional billboards can be deployed in virtually any environment. The 4x4 heavy-duty system is compliant with the DoD specifications, making it highly adaptable for a wide range of missions in order to deliver potentially life-saving information. Or to just spew mass fucking propaganda at the world? Are you kidding me? Like, these things are going to be walking down the, or driving down the street, doing the little, like, Corbella and DeLong, like, they're out of this world, Tucker, they're coming from everywhere, like, are you kidding me? This is a propaganda machine, it's a 35-foot display. What the hell is he doing involved with this? Why is he a part of this? I just don't even get it. I don't get it. What a weirdo. It sounds like that's somebody else's project that they have pushed into his agenda, his group, and he's just going along with it. You know, kind of like the group uh, like Lou and Mellon are doing over at the Galileo Project now with Avi Loeb, where they're trying to get in there and hijack the damn thing for their own uses. (sighs) Wake up, people. This is the same Tom DeLonge. He's got no business being involved in that stuff, but whatever. I'm sure it's an agreement and a partnership thing. Here they're touting their sales again. Those are the cooked books we got. They've got, you know, first quarter retail sales increased 56% over 2019. And they made a whole ton of money, but they didn't pay back the loan to Tom DeLong. We'll find out why here in a minute. In 2020, the company released the following new products and services. The Electro Rapid, the Illustro Rapid Response Vehicle. So the propaganda machines on the streets. Awesome. I'd like to rent one. Maybe I can pay them to drive around, you know, like LA and play my Area 503 videos for me. Vital Vio's clinically proven antimicrobial LED technology solution. Again, is this how put-offs baby? Is this some kind of weird thing that they snuck out of the Pentagon and, and you know, what the hell is that now? Boomer branded retailing merchandise. Oh, well, that's appropriate. Embrace the boomer generation, right? I do too. You know, boomers are great. Collectible Fender Stratocaster miniature replica guitars. (laughs) Okay, Tom. Angels and Airwaves. All that's left is love t-shirt to benefit feeding San Diego COVID-19 response fund. Groovy. Finally, something that's altruistic, you know, giving a little bit of money back uh, to the, uh, you know, the San Francisco COVID-19 fund. I love it. <clears throat> I love it. Season two of the docu-series on a and History Channel's Unidentified. Didn't even know that they were going to do a season two. Good for history. Um, premiered July 11th. The company's employees were key cast members in the series. Yep, they're all over that one. They love that series. Um, it just lets them say whatever they want and um, doesn't really question them, I don't think. I haven't really watched Unidentified. I'm not trying to talk ill about it. Um, but to me, it just seemed like it was just kind of pretty much the same stuff that we see here on YouTube with Elizondo and all those guys. Um, yeah, Baker, I don't know what's up with those replica gu- guitars, man. That's staying strange. I just don't get it. Um, just another, you know, revenue stream like they talked about. But what good is making revenue if you don't pay your bills with it? If you just default on your on your loans? Let's see. Over the next 12 months, the company intends to accelerate the development of our artificial intelligence initiatives so the solution can be utilized as a predictive analysis tool in various government, commercial, and private sectors. So, great. They're going ahead with that. That's why they're keeping the crowd. They're actually going to do this. Cool. Why? Why? What does that serve to benefit the public? What does that have to do with anything? Why isn't the government doing this on their own if it's necessary? I just don't get it. Hey, Bubbles, I, I just want to hit. I just want to hit this nail right on the head. I don't hate 
anybody on this planet. I hate no human being. I don't hate animals, except for, I don't like, I don't like spiders. I don't like spiders, but I don't hate animals. I don't hate anything. I hate ideals. I hate ideals and I hate things like lying. I hate manipulation. I hate things like poverty and uh, unequal social justice, so to speak. I hate ideals. I don't hate anybody, especially not Lou. I feel sorry for Lou because he thinks he's doing all this for some no cause and he either has tricked himself into believing that through denial or he's just kidding himself. But he's not... His mean his motives are not altruistic, and quite frankly, he's just not that he's not that important enough. I mean, he's just not. He's not important enough to be like, oh, I hate this guy. I don't hate him. I think he's funny, man. He's actually kind of a joke. Am I getting worked up about it? Yeah, because these guys have been calling me a hater for years, man, and they've been using it as a reason not to listen to these points. So, um, you know, I'm just had it. I've had it. But it's good to know that they're doing something with this AI. I think that's great. I don't think it's going to th be anything better than Skyhub. Um, which is a crowd-sourced um, and open-source uh, UFO trouble, uh, UFO um, s um, tracking program, sort of, so to speak. You can set up a Skyhub, um, Skyhub UFO tracker. You can build one of these things and slap some cameras on it and put it in your in your uh, yard. And it will automatically detect any UFOs that fly over with some motion tracking, capture it, and it will send all of the data in to these to a main source where it's being cataloged. So that kind of sounds like what they're trying to do right now is basically copy that. But it's going to be a private version of that. And the fact that, um, you know, what's his name? Jim Simavan's involved in it. It was a long history of central intelligence agency work. You probably don't want people like that building apps and stuff like this to go on people's phones because they might just put a little back door in there to spy on you. Uh, just saying, wouldn't be the craziest thing I've ever heard of. But yeah, so that's where we're at on that one. Let's see, let's move on to this, the... The next point, over the next 12 months, the company intends to focus on expanding our intellectual property portfolio by acquiring and developing new intellectual property for emerging technologies in markets where our team has extensive experience and expertise. That could mean anything. They're trying to make new movies. They're going to make more books. They're, you know, I mean, they've got experience in everything. So um, they, you know, that could mean anything. Intellectual property, I can tell you right now from what I've seen of the company, the only intellectual property that they have are the merch on the merch site, the books, and the films, and then the Angels versus Airwaves music. Um, so I'm ex expecting them to see to see some of that coming, uh, more of that type of stuff. Aha! Continue pre-production planning for the feature film Monsters of California. This includes development plans for expanding the IP into additional media formats and merchandise. If I'm not mistaken, that's the film that Tom DeLonge just wrapped shooting on last week and is his directorial debut. Which, by the way, congrats, Tom, on your directorial debut. I hope it's everything that you want it to be. And I hope it's a kick-ass movie for your sake. Um, you know, but... Um, they, uh, I think, just wrapped on that, so it's probably going into post now, and we'll be seeing it. You know, it could be three months, could be six months. Who knows when that's going to be coming out? Um, let's see. Uh, so they're continuing the production on that at in uh, 2020, and it's done finally now in 2022. Invest in expanding to the stars entertainment merchandise brand, which we know that they've done. They've expanded that brand. They've got new products on their merch site. In fact, as I said earlier, that's the only thing that's working for them and making them any money. Everything else seems to be, uh, you know, kaput. But uh, for some reason, their merch, merch is just kicking off. So uh, they're going to keep expanding that, of course, with that awesome marketing skills that uh, DeLong has, where he just throws a little money at something and, and, you know, outbeats the rest of the world who's doing the same thing, you know, during COVID and stuff. Let's see. They're going to leverage their exposure from the TV docu-series uh, Unidentified, uh, to further uh, educational efforts about unidentified UAP. So what they're going to say, what they're saying now is that next year they're going to take uh, credit for educating the public on UAPs. And when they, people say, well, what'd you do? They're going to point to unidentified, which is not their project. <laughs> it's a and project. So yeah, they're going to take credit for something they didn't do. Again, invest in content communication to educate the public about TTSA's product and mission. I think I'm doing that for you guys. Save your money. <laughs> Continue our efforts to educate and influence policy at all levels of the DOD and U.S. government in order to fully research studies of unidentified UAP. 
again, I'm not sure what they were doing at the DOD anymore, unless they're still working with Lou and things like that. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see until they can produce some of that evidence to support that claim. I haven't seen it. Complete the evaluation stage and begin the de development phase on the Bells and STME projects, which I got to tell you, no idea what those are off the top of my head. I'd have to Google those and I'm not really interested at the moment because I want to move through this. Looks like they've got a couple of pro projects though, including their Atom research project, which I believe was their UFO tracker. So now we're going to get into some interesting data here. That's not going to look very good for Mr. DeLong or to the Stars Academy, because remember, as we mentioned earlier, during the year 2020, their sales were doing better than ever. Their costs were down. Um, they said right off the get go in the top that they were able to basically offset the loss from the merchandise shop in Encinitas due to the COVID by this additional online merchandise sales and stuff. So they're basically saying that they're one of those rare businesses that beat COVID where, as we all know, many did not. Um, let's take a look at what they have to say about that. We need to seek more funds to complete these projects after 12 months. The company is currently evaluating different funding mechanisms to allow the entertainment, science and technology divisions, which I'm not sure why they said those separately. Those are two divisions. So they're coming up with, they need to come up with a funding stream for the two different divisions in order to accelerate progress, scale and expand, including institutional monies, foundations, private equ equity and angel investment. So they're pretty much just saying that they're going to take money from whoever will give it to them. That's what angel investment is, private equity, foundations, and all that stuff. They're trying to get money. Why? Why? Because they took all the money that was paid in on the stocks and they paid it out to their employees. That's why they need more money to operate because they didn't... <laughs> okay, sorry. COVID-19 global pandemic. The outbreak over the COVID... COVID-19 coronavirus has been declared a pandemic by the WHO and continues to spread in the United States. Can I don't know if I even need to read all that, but let me scan it, make sure and there's nothing relevant. They're basically talking about the emergency orders that are in place to date the businesses right here. To date, our business has not experienced a significant negative impact due to COVID-19 disruptions. But it did, however, close their shop front, they said. They were able to make the money up by switching to online sales, which is great because the shop Who's going to drive to and to go buy, buy junk when you can go on a webpage? I mean, that should have been done in, you know, 1996. I mean, isn't that when everybody switched to the internet? Like, it got started getting stuff? I don't know. But anyways, uh, all these events could make it... Let's see. So they talk about COVID. All these events could make it difficult and possible for us to deliver, to deliver our products to our customers and could decrease the demand for our products. Well, yeah, everybody felt that in uh, 2020. For example, on March 15th, we had to temporarily shut down, March 15th, 2020, we had to temporarily shut down our retail store in Encinitas, California, because it was not considered an essential business, which could remain open through the pandemic period. They didn't have to close it. They could have paid the rent on it and just not open the business. But apparently in California, they were not considered an essential business, which makes sense. UFO trinkets and Tom DeLong's little surf shack, which is really what that is. So he can go hang out there all day and run down to the beach and, and play surfer. Um, you know, that's not really an essential business. So I understand that. Um, and from what I understand, California had some pretty strict uh, closure uh, policies. So that makes sense. Uh, let's see here. They say that they reopened the store on June 4th with a limited Tuesday to Thursday or Tuesday to Saturday schedule and strict sanitation guidelines. But the so it sounds like they tried to partially reopen with restrictions, but our retail location had no sales from the period of March 15th to June 4th. So they opened it, but it didn't have any sales. Well, that makes sense. Why'd you open it? Uh, this could include, let's see. Our projects involving television and film were able to continue production with virtual interview sessions, remote editing, virtual production tools, virtual promotional activities, and limited on-set visits to key cast members. So they're saying their entertainment work was not hampered by COVID, but that their shop front did. They rolled everything into online marketing and on the online shop front, and it more than compensated for the losses. No big deal. Great. Good on him. They say that they continued, the company was also able to continue the onboarding process under the CRADA with the U.S. Army through the exchange of proprietary information, meta materials, facility setup, and remote communications. 
we'll come back to that in a second. However, laboratory testing that we planned to conduct pursuant to our Atom research project was paused and will resume at some future date when the laboratories resume normal operations. Remote programming work on Vault and Scout continued as well. So let's go back to that first part. They were continuing the process of the Krata online, and it says that they were exchanging proprietary information, and this part's important, guys, meta materials. Does that mean that does that mean that the army gave the TTSA some form of meta material to study in 2020? And if so, was that before Lou left? Is he the one who got it? Is that all that stuff that they had? Because I'd never seen that actually legitimate, like admitted to by the government, but maybe they claim that it's true. Very interesting. Let's go down to the COVID-19 part. The COVID-19 pandemic had a ne negative effect on us being able to solicit investment effectively in the marketplace pursuant to our regular Regulation A offering. So they're basically blaming COVID for them not meeting their obligations under the SEC filing, which I'm not sure that the SEC filing has a stipulation for things like that, although it probably does for emergencies. Um, let's see. The offering, which expired on July 12th. 2020. This was partially due to the fact that the media coverage was primarily focused on several stories of profound national and global importance, including developments related to the COVID-19 virus or pandemic. So again, he's saying well, the mainstream media didn't cover my stuff or they were they were all covering COVID and that's why my, my store closed. Well, duh. But you didn't complain when they were all covering UFOs and Lou Elizondo, the Pentagon's top UFO hunter for 10 years, when that was a bunch of garbage, Tommy. You just let that one float and rode its coattail all the way to 2000 and, you know, now. <laughs> I mean, like, come on, you're still writing it. So whatever. If it's good in the for the goose, it should be good for the gander. But apparently, Tom DeLong likes to have his cake and eat it when he wants to. Let's see. However, ba -ba 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 -ba. They're stating that COVID is still, they don't know how much it's going to affect them, but it is affecting them. And that they're using things like Zoom and Stack for constant uh, evaluations. Now, let's talk turkey. Let's talk turkey, kids, because this is what I like right here. This is data. Now, people can argue with data all, all day long if they want to, but data be data. Data don't lie. All right, people lie. Data, data don't lie. So let's look at the data. Let's take a look at these hard numbers. We got 70 grand in operating cash, as accounts receivables, about $50,000. They had $83,000 in inventory, which is most likely merchandise like DVD sales, um, you know, movies, whatever, t shirts, things like that. They got all that stuff there. Deferred operating cost was nil, it looks like. Yep, they had no deferred operating cost. Prepaid author royalties was $43,000. So those were those royalties that we were talking about earlier. I believe that those are the books that Tom DeLong had wrote previously to join to setting up TTSA that he then licensed to TTSA. So once again, Tommy's getting his chunk of the chicken before it goes to anybody else, including the, the power guy, the rent, you know, the operating costs. But there we go. $43,000 in 2020. Don't forget he's also getting loan payments. Don't forget he's also getting salary. Don't forget he's also getting stock participation. Don't forget he's also getting... Did I miss something? I think there's another way, but yeah, he's getting all that money. <laughs> Total current assets were listed at $250,000, up uh, down from last year, it looked like, in 2019, uh, by about $90,000, interesting enough. Prepaid uh, author royalties was $87,000. So they've got $87,000 in their royalties. Property and equipment, $157,000. Huh? The shack in, in Encinitas, one hundred fifty dollars Man, there's got to be something else in there. What property and equipment could TTSA own that's valued at $150,000? I mean, are these office computers or is, is this a, a rental, you know, a, a rental property? Is it, what is it? Property and equipment. I don't know. I don't know. Again. <laughs> smells like some books be burning, boys. Boys and girls. The books are burning. These books are cooked, in my opinion. Media assets, just under $100,000. And other assets, $42,000. Again, I don't know what the other assets could be. They could be anything. Could be cash. Um, here's this revolving line of credit under the liabilities. So you've got the cash on the top, the assets. Now we've got the liabilities down here. Liabilities and stockholder equity. 
deficit. Current liabilities, accounts receivable, $389,000. They say that they owe people $389,000. Keep in mind, that's everybody from the landlord that they rented the beach shack to, to the phone guy who pays for the cell phones, to the roadies for angels uh, and airwaves, to Tom DeLong and his royalties. It's all right there. And he needs to get paid before anybody else does. And so a lot of those liabilities are, I wouldn't be surprised if you chop that up and a quarter of a million dollars of this 300,000 is to Tom DeLong in, in one form and shape or another, but we'll see. Revolving line of credit due related party for there's that 469,000. So they pretty much maxed out their line of credit with DeLong, which is great. And you're going to see why in the next filing. Um, Paul, I'm not, Paul Cargo asks, let me see if I can put that on the screen real quick. Paul Cargo asks, how much stock did they sell? To the best of my knowledge, they didn't sell hardly any, like a million seven or a million three or something like that. It was nowhere near the 30 million that they said that they were going to sell or get. Um, but they didn't, they didn't, they didn't get a whole lot. And I don't know that they've sold any more since then. Um, maybe, but not in any substantial, um, quantity. Um, let's see. So the revolving line of credit was 469. The amounts due related party, another half of a million. So there we've got, that's probably debt to DeLong again, um, that we talked about at the beginning where they were, you know, two million dollars in debt by choice by choice because remember they they could have made that money they could have paid that debt but they chose not to pay DeLong again we're going to find out why so their current liabilities are listed here uh let's see where, where we did the accounts due so we've got the accrued liabilities another eighty five thousand. we've got the short-term loans of about three hundred thousand dollars and their accrued total liabilities are about 1.8 million dollars and i believe again to answer your question there earlier had they have taken all of that money and put it into paying off their debt, they wouldn't have this number. Because remember, they sold 1.3 or whatever in stock. If they hadn't wasted that money, they could have used that instead of going into debt. But they chose to go into debt. And we're going to, again, I keep saying it. We're going to find out why here in just a minute. <laughs> so December 31st, 2019, Class A common stock value was one penny. They had 100 million shares authorized. And it looks like they issued, there's your answer right there, 12 million 84 shares. So they did make a little bit of money. If I if, if I understand and I do my math right, if they sold 12 million shares at five bucks, that's 60 million bucks they made. Um, you know, just off the top of my head. So there you go. That was, looks like, and actually, if you look at it, that number looks pretty dang close. Look, I said 60, 53. So they paid off some other debts anyways. There you go, folks. There's that financial information. Does TTSA look like a sound investing device uh, or investing situation? I would say hell no. I, I would never put a nickel into this into this stock. Um, and in fact, I am quite honestly shocked that there's not some sort of a stock investigation uh, going on by the SEC or you know somebody else. There should be. And maybe after, maybe there will be, maybe, maybe we'll start screaming about this. You know, um, there's no love between TTSA and I, after they tried to stop on my free speech by hitting me with a copyright strike, a channel with 2000 viewers on YouTube. Oh, big mean nasty nanny. You better squish him. Pfft. Tom DeLong's a ninny. He's a ninny. All right. Revenues. Let's look at some money, 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 more money. Looks like 2020, they had 700,000 in revenues. We went over this before. They had 300,000 in costs. They had a gross profit of $400,000, which they chose not to pay Tom DeLong with because they could have zeroed that out and wrote, written off the $500,000 in debt, but they chose not to. Uh, let's see. Their administrative and operating costs for the year. Wow, look at that. $225,000 in general and administrative operating costs. What? What? How? How do you drop a quarter of a million bucks on operating costs when you're operating out of a little shack in Encinitas and it's like you and your sister running the place? I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I am just, I am stupefied here. What is going on, man? Let's see some numbers. Let's see some receipts. I just want to see a, a summary of that breakdown, which I'll try to find. I wonder what he's claiming on that. He must have some expensive office equipment. You know, maybe he's got a gold-plated UFO, you know, she lazy boy, you know, and a, you know, maybe he purchased a Abraham Lincoln's historic desk to put in his office. I don't know how you got a quarter of a million in operating costs. 
Uh, sales and marketing, $500,000. Wow. I wish I had a half a million to market my, my YouTube channel. I might have more than 2,000 subscribers. <laughs> Stock-based compensation. So there you go. Million four they paid out to employees in stock-based compensation. That's another million four that could have gone to De, gone to DeLong to pay the debt. Um, could have paid off most of the debt to DeLong. Instead, they're paying it to DeLong in the form of stock-based compensation. So why should they pay off the debt if they can just give him the money that the company has in stock-based compensation, in royalties, in salaries, in um, paying for his third childhood, you know, the Angels and Airwaves tour? Um, <laughs> again, it's just right here, folks. It's all right here. I, if you disagree with the data, my numbers, by all means, say something. Call me up and call me a moron, man, and we'll go over it. Um, anyways, uh, depreciation and amortization on their loans. They had $75,000 depre uh, depreciation on their equity or on whatever their office supplies were, computers. I mean, that makes sense. Everything you have depreciates. Your computer depreciates. My kidneys are depreciating every day. Um, everything depreciates. Lunar Sparkles, see you in the, in the chat. Justin Amonard, I'm going to shout out all the new people who have popped in here. Um, share this link on your social media. YouTube's not going to get us past 30 people. Once 30 people are in my chat, it won't let any more people in. YouTube hates me because I'm small. Um, hope if I missed anybody there, I'll try to get back to you and give you all a shout out here. Uh, 68 grand in interest. I wonder who that went to Mr. DeLong yet another way he's getting paid. Remember? Cause he's paying the interest on his loans. Oh my God. Oh my God. Total other expenses, 66,000 loss before provision for income tax, $1.9 million loss for the year of 2020 provision for income taxes, 1600 net loss, $1,909,130 for the year, a net loss per share, basic and diluted of 17 cents. But th those are the real shares, not the class A shares that we talked about. Um, the class A shares were already worth one one thousandth of a penny to begin with, and they're now worth even less. Um, you can get a Cheerios coupon that says it's worth one one hundredth of a penny. So why would you buy a TTSA stock when a coupon you can clip out of your newspaper has got more financial value than this stock? No joke. Uh, let's see. Net loss was one nine. Depreciation and amortization is broken down here. Stock based compensation is broken down here. Accounts receivable inventory is broken down. Twenty eight forty two. We went through all these numbers above. Right here, look. Remember, I said I hope he has a badass desk and chair. Negative. They spent no money on the purchase of property and equipment, so their quarter of a million dollar operating costs are God knows what. Um, couldn't tell you. Cash flow from investing in tech activities. So they got eleven thousand dollars from investing for the year. So they had a one point, just under two million dollar loss, and people brought in eleven thousand dollars. That sounds like a losing business to me. Don't need to do the math to know that that sort of um, cash flow in and out is not very sustainable for long. <clears throat> cash flow from financing activities, advances from relating parties, sixty one thousand. Proceeds from short term loans and advances, a quarter of a million. Repayments on short-term loans, two hundred thousand. Hey, that's great. Anyone can tell you when you borrow two hundred fifty thousand dollars and only pay back two hundred that you're doing good. <laughs> Idiot! Now you're paying paying interest instead of paying off. Anyways, regular A capital raise on the shares issued were two hundred twenty-nine thousand. Uh, deferred operating costs on on the uh, regulation A capital stock one twenty-four thousand. Gives them a net cash provided by financing of just over $200,000, which again could have been used to pay off those debts to Mr. DeLong, but they weren't. Nothing else important here. 66000 on interest. That's it. Let's take a peek here. I'm just going to scan this stuff real quick. They've got their go notice to going concern. I believe that this is a typo and this is supposed to be an ongoing concern. But whatever, the accompanying financial statements have been uh, prepared on an ongoing ba going concern basis, whatever, maybe that's a legal term, which contemplates the realization of assets and satisfaction of liabilities in the normal course of business. The company has incurred losses from operations and has an in accumulated deficit at June 30th, 2020 of $53 million, $53,741,130. That number was 43 million when the story broke about it last year about them being in 
you know, un- unfinancial, you know, financially unviable. That that story broke, and that number has gone up ten million in two two years, I believe. So, yeah. Why do they have a deficit? Because they keep giving their employees stock options to crank that number up so that any money that this company makes will go back to DeLong and the other employees as this stock participation, stock incentive program, and will not go to pay off the debts or to pay the shareholders. And again, why doesn't he want to pay the debts? So that he can default on them and take the IP, which he's starting to do. Cash, I'm sorry if I missed your questions. Again, guys, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to do this. And my setup is less than ideal because I have to crane my neck all the way over to the side to see even the chat. And I'm trying to focus on what I'm saying, not reading here. But I love y'all. And thank you guys, every single one of you who's come in or who's watching this on the, the replay. Thank you for having interest in what I think and say and for coming here and wanting to learn something. Because I'm not only illustrating what's in these documents, but how people can read them for themselves and go out and find this information for themselves. I'm on sec.gov. Anybody who's got a smartphone or computer can look this information up. And I'm trying to teach you how to do it so you can do it for yourselves. But let's keep going. For the purposes of the consolidated statement of cash flows, the company considers all highly liquid debt instruments purchased with an original maturity of three months or less to be cash equivalent. So they're counting all their short-term loans and things like that as cash. Again, muddy in the water because credit is not the same as cash, as we all know. Accounts receivable and allowance for doubtful action accounts. Uh, let's see. Is there anything in here worth mentioning? All accounts receivable are recorded at the invoiced amount or are non-interest bearing accounts receivable. So they're saying they don't charge their people who owe them money. They don't charge them interest. Accounts receivable primarily consist of trade receivables. The company maintains an allowance for doubtful accounts to reserve the potential for potential uncollectible receivables. Company maintains. Yeah, they're saying that they're keeping a buffer of money to write off in case people don't pay their bills, which every company does. The company makes judgments as to its ability to collect outstanding receivables and records allowances, blah, blah. There's nothing there, guys. Let's move on. Inventory. Inventory, which can, so we were asking about this earlier. What is their inventory? When they say they've got an inventory of $100,000 on hand or whatever it was, $80,000, we're saying, what is this? Inventory, which consists primarily of merchandise, are stated at the lower cost of market. Cost is determined using the first in, first out method. Well, good for you, Tom, because you're saying that when you have to account for stuff on paper, like to pay tax, you're going to pay the lower cost and you're going to claim it's worth a buck. But when you go to sell it, you're going to sell it for 60 More cookbooks, man. More cookbooks, man. Tommy B. Cooking them books. Yeah. Going to make a, a cookbook stew. Uh, yeah. Property and equipment are stated at cost. The company's fixed assets are depreciated using the straight line method. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, leasehold, that's standard. Leasehold improvements are depreciated over the short. Yeah, that's standard. Maintenance and repairs are charged to operations as incurred. Well, that's interesting because their operations cost was extremely high. So I wonder if they did a bunch of maintenance and repairs on something and build the company for it. Um, either properly or improperly. Significant renewals and betterments are capitalized at the time of retirement or other disposition of property and equipment. The cost and accumulated depreciation are removed from the accounts and any resulting gain or loss is reflecting operations. That's all business 101. That's probably just cut and paste anyways. Uh, let's see. Is there anything in here that's... <clears throat> Yeah, they're talking about the loan here of the media cost. Pre-publication cost. The company capitalizes the art, pre-process, manuscript, studio time, engineering, production, and other costs included with the creation of the master copy or final product of a book, music, or other media company. Well, that's awesome. So now he's saying that the company is going to pay for him to make all this media and stuff, which we already knew it was, and that... Um, they're not going to be the, the company is not going to be compensated for it because once the, the company creates IP, it's the, then used as collateral for Tom DeLong's loan. <coughs> Excuse me. Under this, let's see down here. They're basically saying under this method, the amortization expense record for a pre-publication cost asset is approximately forty percent, forty-seven percent in year one, twenty-five percent in year two, fourteen in year three, and then eight and five to make a five-year uh, repayment plan. That's pretty standard too, I think. Royalty advances. Now, this is interesting. Royalty advances to authors are capitalized and represent amounts paid in advance of the sale of an author's product and recovered and are recovered as earned. 
As advances are recorded, a partial reserve may be recorded immediately based primarily upon historical sales experience. Advances are evaluated periodically to determine if they are ex expected to be recovered. Any portion of a royalty advance that is not expected to be recovered is fully reserved. As of June 30th, 2018 and December 30th, 2017, royalty advances recorded with other within other current assets in the accompanying consolidated balance sheets were $168,000 and $153,000 respectively. Sorry, I had to get that dang frog out of my throat. And then they say in the following part of June 30th that there was no uh, reserves written across the royalty advances. But again, they've got balance sheets where they owe somebody for royalties, and I'm assuming it's Tom DeLong. Impairment of long-lived assets. Assets. The long-lived assets held and used by the company are reviewed for impairment no frequently. Then uh, circumstances indicate that carry amount are not recoverable. Yeah, that's standard too. Whoa, what's this? Deferred rent. The company accounts for lease rentals which have, which th that have escalating rents on a straight line basis over the life of each lease. So now we're getting to some of those operating costs that we were talking about earlier. Um, as of June 30th, 2020 and December 30th, 2019, the company's liability related to such was $40,000 and $38,000 respectively. So where'd the other $210,000 come from? Because remember, there was a quarter of a million dollars in operating costs and the rent was only $40,000. Um, hey, have a good night, Jesse. Take care, man. And anybody else who has taken off. I know that I started late and I'm on the West Coast, which is the best coast. But uh, still, uh, thanks for coming by. Maybe catch it on a replay. Take care. Um, so yeah, they've got these uh, debts to this deferred rent. So again, and where's the other $210,000 for operating costs for the year? Now I'm starting to get sketched because now it sounds like they dropped twenty k a month on um, something. Where did it go? How are they burning up $20,000 a month? You know? Yeah, you guys are three hours ahead. Anyone on East Coast is three hours ahead of me. Sorry, buddy. Now, I'll do it in the next one in the morning for you. <laughs> the company recognizes revenue pursuant to accounting standards cert codification 606. Yeah, we know that's pretty standard too. In addition, the company records revenues net of an estimated sales return allowance as of June 30th, 2020 and December 30th, 2019. The company's sale return allowance was $40,6800 respectively. How? How? How these books are these none of these books make sense. Cost, yeah. Okay, here we go. Here's the stock based compensation. <clears throat> the company uses ASC 17, 718, and ASC 505 for stock based compensation. Compensation for all stock based awards, including stock options and restricted stock, is measured at fair value on the date of grant and re recognized over the associated vested periods. The fair value of stock options is estimated on the date of the grant. Yeah, this is standard. The fair blah, blah, blah. We get to the bottom of the good stuff. For em employees, the company recognizes compensation expense for stock options and rest restricted stock awards on a straight line basis. So when I told you earlier that I thought that they were paying their employees with stock benefits, I don't have to think it anymore. We know it because they just said it. As of June 30th, 2020, December 31st, all non-employee awards had similar vesting terms for those of employees. They're saying they're treating them fairly. They have to do this. They didn't have a number though. This common stock, let's see. As of April 16th, 2019, holders of shares of common stock subject to options executed in the Recession and Re Relinquishment Act agreement dated April 18th, 2019, thereby reducing the number of vested and non-vested shares of common stock subject to options. So they have the amount of available shot or however, I don't know how they cut it, but they cut down the amount of stocks that they were making available to the public in an effort to try to increase the value of their own stock. It didn't work. Um, let's see what else we have here. And they're talking about the stockholder. Let's see. On April 24th, the board approved issuances of option shares to employ directors, consultants, and independent advisors. But as of April 30th, not all documents affecting these transactions have been affected or executed. The issuance of new option shares will impact the items discussed in Note 6, stockholders deficit. Okay. I'm going to try to skip down to the relevant stuff, guys. 
because I want to get through this and I'm starting to run out of time. I only got about another 20 or 30 minutes tops. So, does it say anything about the loss of the common shares? Nope. Let's just run over. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Property and equipment consisting of the following on June 30th and December 31st, 2019. Furniture and fixtures, 64000 Leasehold improvements, $372,000. Why are you improving a property that you're renting? That is ridiculous. That $350,000 should have been used to pay the loans off or to go back to your stock people. And again, remember how I talked about that earlier, how they could incur those costs on a cost-by-case basis. I mean, that could be anything from uh let's say let's say tom delong has got a toilet in in the in the hq we assume he does and the plumbing goes out on it so he calls a plumber but he just doesn't call any plumber let's say he calls his buddy joe the plumber and joe the plumber shows up and he's like joe i'm gonna pay you a hundred grand to unplug my toilet and joe breaks out a turd hammer and just goes boom 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 and you know unclogs the thing and walks away and gets a hundred grand that could be what we're looking at here i have no idea why they would spend close to four hundred thousand dollars on leasehold improvements unless they have a facility that i'm not aware of that's not the encinitas beach shack you know um i could not see in fact they've already said that the the maintenance or the rent on that place was only 40 grand how do you spend 10 times your rent on improvements uh, something ain't right man something ain't right here machinery and equipment one hundred sixty-three thousand dollars. well boy i guess it depends on what kind of equipment you got if those are all computers that should be a pretty sweet computer system mine's my total equipment's worth maybe a hundred 150 bucks, 200 bucks. I don't know. <laughs> Can't tell you. This is crazy. Media assets consisted of the following as of June 30th. Let's go down to the assets. Media assets, music, 428,000. Media assets, books, 309,000. Media assets, web, $75,000. Their website's worth 75 grand. Why? Because they say it is. Um, Paul, that's a good question. Paul, Paul asks, Paul Cargo says, where's the original $50 million of stock money? We went over that. It's $50 million in stock debt, but they haven't cashed all that out. It's just a liability to their employees. Um, so conceivably, they could at any time and the company would go out, you know, they could cash them out, but you can't cash out stock if you don't have cash to give them. It's kind of a catch-22. Um, so yeah, they need to make some money before they can start kicking some back. <coughs> Mr. Bubbles, I've seen Lunar Sparkles all over the place. Lunar's great. Uh, media assets, uh, accumulation and amortization, 790000 So they're saying it depreciated from 24000 approximately from this 813 to 790 And that's a pretty lofty number, especially when you see the next doc number that we're going to see here. All right, folks, this is where I want to get your attention. Remember earlier how we talked about how To The Stars Academy claimed that they were able to offset any sorts of economic revenue that their company had received due to the coronavirus and having to shut down their location. And yet here we are on April 15, 2020, the company received loans, uh, received loan proceeds in the amount of $96,600 pursuant to the paycheck protection program, PPP, which was established as part of the coronavirus aid relief and economic safety act enacted March 27, 2020, 2020. The PP loan matures on April 15, 2020 and bears an interest rate of 1% per annuum, which as we know is a great interest rate because the interest rate that Tom DeLong gave his own company was like closer to 7%, six something, I think. Under the terms of the PPA, some or all of the loan and accrued interest are eligible for forgiveness after an eight-week measurement period if the company uses the loan proceeds for qualifying expenses as described in the CARE Act. The company intends to use the proceeds for purposes consistent with the PPP and believes it will meet the conditions for forgiveness of the loan, of the loan and accrued, accrued interest. I want to explain a few things to people right now if you don't know. The PPP program was great for small businesses. It saved a lot of people I know who got some sort of government economic stimulus but did not get enough to keep their business open. This filled the gap for a lot of small businesses. However, the PPP program, if I'm not mistaken, was handled through the Small Business Administration and it had no oversight. And one of the problems with it is that a lot of the money that was given out of the program didn't go to small companies who it was supposed to. There were major corporations that got millions of dollars of this money and were shamed by the public into giving it back because they were companies like maybe even Walmart or big companies like McDonald's or something like that. Um, 
that's what happened. Um, and because of that, the smaller companies, I know a lot of people who had smaller companies and they were not able to get money, even though they qualified for it. What they said, they all got letters and it said, by the time we came around to pay you out, there was no money left. And then you read in the news the next day about how this this little guy couldn't get a check for, you know, 10 or 12 grand that would have really saved his bacon. And instead, the big guys were getting 7 million, 10 million, 11 million. Um, really, really irks me and really gets under my skin, especially when I see that a company that has admitted that they were not financially affected by COVID. In fact, they profited. Um, and yet here they are with their hand out getting close to a hundred grand of this money and it fully intend to not have to pay any of it back because they're going to reopen. That's shady as hell. And if it's not illegal, which I think it is, I think it is. I think in order to get that money from the PPP protection act, you had to tell them that you were financially and economically harmed by the coronavirus. Otherwise you couldn't have gotten it. Um, but yeah, here we go. A hundred thousand PPP loan that they're going to get for free. As they say right here, the company intends to use the proceeds for purposes consistent with the PPP and believes it will meet the conditions of forgiveness for the loans and accrued interest. So that was what I was getting at earlier. Not only did they make a bunch of money in 2020, cut their operating costs down to maximize the profit, get a hundred grand from the government, but then use none of that to pay their damn bills to Tom DeLong. And why? So that he could get the intellectual property from the company, which we're going to see in the next filing. Shit. We're going to have to go there now or I'm going to run out of time. Sorry. I'm going into Cambian mode for this one. Steven, I hope you're watching this and I hope that makes you chuckle because I'm going into Steven Cambian mode on this one where it's just complete garbage and it's BS and I'm just calling it right out, man, and laughing at it. Laughing. I'm sorry that anybody thought that this was a viable company for even a moment. It's jokes on you. 91,000 shares of preferred stock. Now, it's not the Class A common stock. This is the preferred stock. This is the stuff that DeLong and his family own. These are the ones who are getting paid, not the stockholders, not the people who bought in at five bucks a share and bought a stock that was worth less than a, you know, a coupon at your supermarket. Let's see. Again, paying debt forgiveness. They're paying off... The company, oh, here we go. And this is where it starts to get good. On March 31st, 2019, with an effective date here too, the company and the shareholder entered into a debt forgiveness agreement, whereby the shareholder has forgiven the entire principal balance of $600,000 owed under the note to all of... To all of the recruit interest on the note of $88,000, this has resulted in a total amount of $688,000 monies owed to the shareholder of the effective date of being forgiven, treated as contributed capital and re reclassified to additional paid in capital of, of that date. So they're basically setting the, the groundwork here to default on the loan. Remember the loan that was secured with the TTSA property. I'm going to skip all these stock stuff because it's not real relevant. Like I said, I want to get down to the end and show you guys the end of it. Wow, look at this right here. During the years ended December 31st, 2018 and 2017, the company recognized $7 million and $21 million respectively of stock compensation expenses related to stock options. That's what we were just talking about. As of December 31st, total unrecognized stock compensation expenses related to, to the unvested stock options was $12 million, uh, $12.6 million, which will be recognized as stock compensation expense over the remaining vested terms. During the year, uh, December 31st, 2017, there was another 4, 000, or 4 million options to non-employees, of which 3 million were outstanding on December 31st, 2018. So they gave out $4 million of stock to people who didn't even work there. Why? Uh, wait, the non-employees consist of an advisory board members? So they've got some kind of advisory board members that they're paying off with TTSA stock? Of the options granted, $5 million were granted to an employee who is a relative of the majority shareholder. Oh, oh, Tom DeLong's sister and PR rep and the one who's been running everything? Bogus, bogus bogus this is all red flag after red flag after red flag after red flag <clears throat> all right
here's the line of credit we spoke about earlier that Tom DeLong extended the company. The line of credit allowed the company to borrow funds up to four hundred ninety-five thousand dollars at eight point five per eight point five eight percent per annum. The twenty eighteen note required minimum monthly payments, as we read all of that. Um, the company has out. As of December 31st, the company had outstanding borrowings owing under the line of credit in the amount of $463,000 and $335,000, respectively. So they're saying that they owe Tom DeLong about uh, $800,000 still. The company is no longer able to borrow against the note. And that's where thing is going, things are going to get interesting. They're talking about the loan some more here and the advances. And this is all information that we've already read. I want to get down to... Is this, the, this is the promissory note. So they're rolling the debts in. You see what happens is originally the company started with $400,000 debt and it started getting more debt. That was all Tom's personal debt or a business debt that he had. So um, <clears throat> let's see here. Then there was additional debt that they've occurred, acquired, uh, acquired because they're not paying their loans. So they made a promissory note of $600,000. I want to get to the part where they talk about the notes though or the bank where they pay it off excuse me okay we're going to go on to the next part i think th since this one's pretty much done i want to go to the most current filing for ttsa and this was posted yeah last year it was filed uh september 21 And this is the semi-annual report. And there's really just a couple of things that I want to touch on in here. I'm just going to go down to it. Here, they're talking about COVID again. Remember how they weathered it real well and they made a bunch of money, but yet they still took a, a PPP check of a hundred grand. Heroes. Let's look at the numbers for 2021. The company's in June 30th, 2021, the company's gross profit was $542,420 compared to $408,000, $402,226 for the six months ending previously. According, our gross margins remained 57% for the six months that ended 2021. Uh, the company's operating expenses consist of general and administrative expenses, sales and marketing expenses, and stock-based comp uh, compensation. For the six months ending June 30th, compared to the six months ending uh, uh, 2020, for the compared to the first six months for June 30th, 2020. So in 2021, general and administrative ex expenses decreased from $225,000 down to $169,000 for the six, six months, representing a decrease of $55,377 uh, $55, or 25%. This decrease is primarily uh, attributable to savings from facility costs and as a result of the termination of the lease. But remember, we know the lease was only $40,000 a year. So hogwash on that. Um, that number is cooked as well, clearly, because we said earlier that the annual lease was only $40,000 for facilities. Uh, let's see here. Here's a statement about the stock base. Uh, let's see. Company sales and marketing expenses decreased by 49%. Now, again, that doesn't make sense because they're saying in the first six months of 2021, they're saying that they decreased their marketing and sales expenses. But earlier they said that they had increased them and that's how they justified weathering the damned coronavirus. So again, here we are contradicting exactly what they said in the previous statement. They were saying that they, that they made a bunch of money and they were fine. And now they're saying... Um, we spent less, like, which is true. What's going on here, man? We need an investigation. We need to see that the, all the receipts and added up because it just doesn't make any sense. None of it. Here, due to a reduction in salaries for a terminated employee. Oh, so they lose payroll was all that? Seriously, because Lou was the only one who left in August or the end of 2020. That He's the only one that they could have terminated to reduce their, their fees. So, yeah, whatever. They're trying to say that Lou is, yeah, I don't believe that for a second. Lou, did you make a hundred grand a year at, at TTSA? Really? Whew. That's better than the, you know, what, 40K a year you're working as a, making as a GS9 at the Pentagon, right? Isn't it 40 to 60 grand a year? GS9? Uh, let's see. Uh, 
For the next six months ended, let's talk about their other expenses. June 30th, 2021. Other expenses net consisted of one to two time events. A $106,340 non-cash loss on the termination of our facility lease in Encinitas, which was offset by non-taxable income of $96,000. You son of a bitch, Tom. You son of a bitch. He, he had a lease on that building that we know was 40 grand a year, but he paid off $106,000 of the non-cash loss for termination of the lease. So he bought his way out of the lease for $100,000 and used that PPP money for that so he doesn't have to pay it back. And how much do we want to dig to find out who owns that property and got that money? Why? Why would you pay $100,000 to let yourself out of a loan or at least it's only $40,000 a year. That doesn't make any sense unless he just bought out two years worth of the lease. Why the hell would you do that instead of just paying two years of the lease and hoping that you can come back to the building at some point? That makes no sense at all. And I'm calling bullshit. I want to see some facts of that. I want to see some, some receipts. I don't buy that at all. Not at all. Not for one hot second to long. Bullshit. Let's see the receipts. Prove it. I'll take my words back. I'll say that I, I I was wrong. Manny's not above admitting a mistake. I'll tell you what, even if you are DeLong, that's crap. Our net loss for six months ended June 30th was $283,000 compared to the $2 million for the six months of the year before that. The net loss is influenced by the matters discussed. BS. Y'all didn't lose nothing. Y'all cooking your books. Let's see here. I want to see something real quick. Oh, I missed that. I thought it was in this document, but let's take another peek here. So, I'm going to have to wrap it up here in a little bit. So, if anybody's got any questions I didn't get to, let's just go right ahead and ask them now. Uh, love, was it heart? Love. I'm looking for one particular point that was that I know is in this document, but maybe not. Could have swore it was in this one. Let's look at what they did in 2021 real quick. Looks like the same stuff as they did in uh, 2020. Rebranded to the stage and launched a new web to the stars and relaunched a new website. They actually did not do that up until a month ago. Not even that, two weeks ago. They didn't do any of that. That rebrand came when I outed them on Twitter. Go and look at my Twitter feed when I posted TTSA website has gone out and something shady is going on over there. That's the date that they did all that. Signed a new licensing deal with Angels and Airwaves. I'm sure they did. That gives Tom DeLong full control over everything. Here, they're claiming a 49% increase in online sales. Again, I don't believe that. Secured a three-year licensing deal to produce and distribute boxcar racer vinyl. So it looks like he's trying to do a, a Angel versus Airwaves record label, maybe. <coughs> Hi, Open Minds. I'm going over the TTSA breakdown and why I believe that the TTSA is a scam and a fraud and nobody should invest in it. And if you did, you should be calling the SEC now and asking for an investigation so you can get your money back. On January 1st, the company and a Mr. J. Christopher Miser agreed to reduce his director's fee to $2,500 a month. Whatever he's making before that, and whoever miser is, he's getting paid. On February 26, 2021, three board members by the names of Thomas DeLong, Hal Putoff, and Jim Semivan each converted 1,800 shares of the company's Class B common stock into 1,800 shares of the company's Class A common stock. Now, that's a big power up because class a stock are the ones who get paid in this company and actually get to vote on stuff that happens and things like that everybody else is just along for the ride but class a's got the goods so it looks like uh hal tom and jim are making out real well for each other while little guys and people like you and me who bought the stock if you bought any are just got our asses swinging in the wind On June 1st, the company entered into a merchandising agreement with My Products LLC. You know, guys, I'm going to tell you that right now, I'm going to run down all of these LLCs at some point, and I wouldn't be surprised if one or all of them 
are owned by Tom DeLonge or his family members. Just saying. We'll get there. Here we go. This is getting good, boys and girls. So the company entered into this marketing agreement with my products to... Um, oh, look at this right here. FSO, Tom DeLonge, a.k.a. Angel of the Airwaves. Uh, the merchandise agreement wherein the company acquired the exclusive worldwide e-commerce rights and non-exclusive worldwide retail rights to sell my products merchandise. Again, we're going to have to dig into that to see who that is. The te uh, term of the merchandise agreement is one year and shall automatically extend until such time as either party provides a 30-day written notice of termination. The company agrees to pay my products royalties as laid out in the merchandise agreement. So they're doing some another merchandising gig here. I'm not sure what that's all about. That could be toys. That could be that could have been those little guitars and the cars that we were talking about. Could have been any of that stuff. Ah, y'all ready for the you are ready for the dirt? Y'all ready for the dirt? Bob Stewart's here and he, Bob's ready for the dirt. Bob, here's the dirt. The company entered into an amendment to the binding term sheet with Thomas DeLong, whereby the company agreed to terminate the previous services agreement with Mr. DeLong and cease to provide any services to Mr. DeLong. Along the termination of the services to Mr. DeLong, Thomas agreed to provide a capital contribution to the company in exchange for common stock of the company. The company and Mr. DeLong agreed to the total capital contribution was $941,964 for payments made on behalf of the company from 2020 through June 30th, 2021. In exchange for the capital contribution, the company will exchange and issue Mr. DeLong 784,970 shares of its common stock at a price of $1.20 per share. So what the f what are we even talking about here? These $5 share common stock, unless that's a class C stock, not the D stock, what is this? Because we know that that share was sold for $5 a share and out of the gate was valued at one one thousandth of a penny. So I'm not, I think that they're writing off some debt to DeLong here, but they're giving him credit of the debt. They're not even giving him the full five bucks. So they're not even saying, hey, Tom, you owe us 500 bucks. We'll give you a hundred shares. No, they're giving him these shares for a buck 20 for one fifth the price that everybody out there who bought it at the regular price got it for diluting their value of stock because they've just created another 700, almost 800,000 shares of that stock in the pool. So Again, any money now, not only is Tom getting getting paid royalties, salary, stock participation, um, royalties for Angels versus Airwaves, royalties for his books that he um, licensed to TTSA. Now he's getting paid also in the stock end on the back end. So any amount of money that the little guy ever was going to see, now he has to split that with Tom again. Like this guy's got his hand in everything from the top to the bottom of this place. No wonder they're not making any money. Let's see here. What is this now? What is Vivaris Capital? Let me guess, another company he owns. On June 23rd, the company entered into a payment agreement with Vivaris Capital LLC, wherein the company term terminated the consulting agreement and agreed that the v Vivaris was still owed a total of $170,000 as compensation for services rendered under the consulting agreement. Oh, somebody they, they're going to pay a debt. Vivaris and the company agreed that the company would pay Vivaris $40,000 as a cash payment and that the remaining $130,000 would be settled in the company's common stock in exchange for cancellation of the $130,000 in debt to Vivaris. Uh, looks like they issued 108,000 more shares to Vivaris at the price of $1.20. Real nice, guys. Real nice. I'm trying to find the part where he wrote off the debt because he did one of these. He wrote off... $500,000 debt for a movie that he had. It was one of the TTSA, one of the TTSA intellectual property pieces that they had. This is all a repeat. Here we got Tom DeLonge, Hal Putoff, and Jim Semivan, each getting 1,800 shares of stock. Another. So they expired a half a million of stock options that nobody cashed in on on March. Here's another one. The company signed a co-production agreement with Cartel Entertainment, a related party to bring together the company's brand recognition, entertainment contacts, and sources of original IP with Cartel's expense, extensive degree of expertise in the area of film and series production, including contacts and resources for the creation of exploitation 
of audiovisual products. As part of the deal, the parties will work together to develop, produce, and explore productions across all media formats and, and territories. So I wonder if that's the production piece of that money that Dom, Tom DeLong just got done shooting the something in California. What's it called? Somebody help me out in the chat. Love you, chat. Help me out, chat. What's that called? The movie they just got done. Is it Angels and Demons in California? Something like that. <laughs> Let's see here. I know it's in here. I could have swore it is. It was in this document. More royalty advancements. This is all money going to DeLong for his books that he paid. Or he gets royalties for... Um, writing the Angels versus Airwaves songs. I believe he gets a writer credit for those. He gets some kind of royalty from the music, either for production or I'm not sure how the music industry works on that end, but he's making money off of those. And so they're paying him there before anybody else gets it. Here's their rent. Like, how did they, this is what makes me mad. We know that their rent was 40 grand because that's what they paid on it in that, in that one, uh, in the one statement. But, you know, yet they paid a hundred some odd thousand dollars to get themselves out of the, out of the lease. So he must've had a damn two year lease, uh, left on it that he, that he paid on, you know? Oops. Oh gosh. I just backtracked it there, but I want to find that. I want to find where. He paid off the debt to himself with the dang movie. I had it and I posted it on Twitter and now I can't find it here. And that'll be about all the time that I have. I got to get running here pretty soon, folks. But it's been great. And I think everybody who's come by to get some information on this, because a lot of this information, um, like I said, this is all in the public record. We haven't even left sec.gov yet. You know, like I haven't even gone to the Secretary of State in California to start pulling the records on our two dogs and then go over to um, Delaware to get these the Vivaris and get all these different, you know, business things and figure out who's really behind them. I already know who's behind our two dogs, by the way. <laughs> I already know who's named on that but um uh yeah let me see if i can't find this thing so we can get done with this because that was where i wanted to wrap it up and again keep in mind that this was last year's filing there should be a new one coming they should have filed um you know i think i think they need to file by june at the latest but maybe even sooner than that we'll get a copy of their current filings which will give us more information wow look at this in 2021, Tom DeLong says they identified and initiated development plans for over 15 scripts for feature film and TV. What? What? 15 films? I wonder if some of those are unidentified episodes like they said they did with season two of Unidentified. Or, wow, interesting. Okay. Signed a co-production. Yeah, we talked about this cartel. I'm going to dig into those guys soon. Rebranded TTSA and launched a website. Yeah, they didn't do that until I called them out on Twitter for having their website down and said something shady was going on. I think my exact tweet said, uh, at Tom DeLong, prepping the bankruptcy paperwork, are we? <laughs> Get ready to slough the investors. Is that what's going on? <clears throat> launched the global album release of Life Forms. That must have been the Angels and Airwaves album. I've never heard it. If anyone out there has heard it, it would be great. Who's a forensic accountant, Paul? You are? I'd love to have a forensic accountant look over this stuff with me. Because I'm a damned amateur, man. And I've learned this stuff by digging through it and beating my head up on it and looking at everything and trying to figure it out for myself. So if you know an actual forensic ac accountant, bam, let's get them. Let's show them this stuff and, and see what they say. Well, they'll probably agree with me. This is a scam, but... As of June 30th, retail sales have increased 49%. Yeah, we covered that. I think that's BS. I think he's cooking the books there. I don't think they've they've done that. Secured a three-year licensing deal to distribute boxcar racing vinyl. Here, they lowered their fee for this Mr. Miser. That's so funny. He's a miser. What a miser. Uh, let's see. Is this it? Okay, that's where they paid off Tom with stock. We covered that. The company appointed Stan Spry as the director of the company on June 14th, 2021. In connection with his seat on the seat of board of directors, Mr. Spry received 300,000 shares of Class A common stock, as well as an additional 150 shares of Class A common stock on a 36-month vesting schedule. Well, good on you, Mr. Spry. You got $450,000 Class A voting stock uh in ttsa and you will be the guy to get paid before anybody else 
Let's see here what Spry, Spry did. Stan Spry is age 44. Since 2011, Stan has been founding partner and CEO of Cartel Entertainment. Well, I guess I don't have to look them up anymore. Mr. Spry is producer and literary manager and represents top-tier writers, directors, producers, showrunners, and production companies for feature films, television, and new media. Mr. Spry has produced over 125 feature films, 10 television series, and television movies over the last nine years. What? You're 44 years old and produced 125 feature films? Okay. If you say so, I'll check into that. Um, yeah. And you've sold, let's see, and, and over the last nine years, and has sold packaged hundreds more. Mr. Spry has been responsible for developing, producing, selling, or overseeing approximately $250 million in production. Mr. Spry interfaces and does deals with every studio, network, distribution company, and agency in Hollywood. Some of his West best and most well-known projects include the hit series Creep Show. I loved Creep Show. Uh, AMC, Day of the Dead for Sci-Fi. I love Day of the Dead. Uh, 12 Forever, never heard of it, on Netflix, and feature films like Jeepers Creepers 3, Guns, Girls, and Gambling, and Toys of Terror. Oh, good for him. So Mr. Spry is in the house over at TTSA. So at least if they're going to claim to be a motion picture company, at least they actually have a motion picture guy on board. That's great. You know, like, hey, at least they've got a guy who knows what he's talking about there. Uh, let's see here. I'll have to Google Mr. Spry, though, and see what he, all he's done later. Here, they gave a bunch more stock to Vivaris, and they are pursuing these projects. Over the next 12 months, they're going to be focusing on intellectual property creation, IP sourcing, IP development, IP production, IP... Look at all that IP. Look at all this, folks. Look at all this. They don't care about the spaceship. They don't care about anything else. They don't care about anything but this intellectual property because it's all going back to DeLong when the dust settles. They're going to invest into the stars. They're going to expand in advertising. And they're going to leverage the unidentified series, which they've already done, because every time they, they contribute to one of those, they, they go back and tell the SEC that they're furthering UAP education, that they're spreading the word in public service. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're making a for-profit TV series. Like, give me a break. That is not public service. Public service is what I did. Make a documentary and give it away for free. That's a public service, all right? Making an episode of Unidentified is not. Okay. There's just some 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 problems with that. Let's see. Where was... Oh gosh, I really need to find that now before I, I close this off because I do need to get going. But maybe it's not in this document and I'll have to look it up again. So their net losses, as we saw earlier, that were 40 some odd thousand dollars when the story broke and they first... Tom DeLong first said, oh, we're not in debt. And that's a stock thing. Now it's up to $56 million um, because they keep issuing stocks to themselves. Like we just saw all those class A stocks that they issued to those people, to Vivaris, to um, what's that another guy's name? Stan something, Mr. Spry, I think it was, you know, all those stocks that they offered. Um, that is where this deficit comes from right there. That's why this number keeps growing because every time they write, they're basically writing checks that their bank can't cash. They don't have the cash for it. They're at a deficit. If they had to, to pay those debts off right now, they couldn't. So it's not really legitimate or viable. Ah, wait a minute. I think this is the part. Love Movie LLC. Love Movie sounds interesting. I think that's the one where I'm trying to find it again. If it's not here, I'm just going to have to summarize it for you, and I will have to find the document later and post it. But, yeah, look at this here. Now their lease rentals are only $11,000, but before they were saying that they were $100,000 to get out of the lease. I smell bullshit there. I smell complete bullshit. Nope, these are all the stocks, the stocks, the stocks. Yeah, remember how we were talking about property and equipment before? How that number was some three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> now it's down to twelve. Now that's a, that's legitimate. I mean, like twelve thousand dollars of office equipment. You know, between computers and desks, and yes, you count desks when you do these ledgers. You count that your desk is worth eight hundred bucks this year. It's worth six hundred the next, and f for the the next. You know, that's how this works. But yeah. Oh, this, God, this, God, here's this PPP check again. 
God, that steams me, man. I hate seeing that the company got a hundred thousand dollar paycheck protection check, and then you know we used it to pay off to buy their way out of their lease. I don't think I'm going to be able to find that, guys. I'm going to have to find it at some other point and uh, put it online for you. Oh, is this it? Nope. 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 Is it? Maybe it's in here. I don't think I'm going to find it. Um, so I'm just, and I'm just going to have to wrap this up because it's time for me to get going. But uh, what I was looking for was one of the previous statements from last year and their filings that showed that um, the loans that were secured with the IP that TTSA holds, the intellectual property, the films, the books, part of that debt was paid back to Tom DeLonge for one of the movies. They transferred the, the royalty rights for, I think it was Love Movie or something like that. One of the films that they did, he wrote off close to $500,000 in debt and took the IP. And that's exactly what I said that he was going to do in day one. And remember how I pointed out earlier in this video that he had $400,000 last year and could have paid off his loans to himself and chose not to so that he could post a profit on paper and probably spend that money on the tours, the Angels and Airwaves tours. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's all shady. And I've, and I've, I, this was kind of a speed run into it in two hours or three hours. There's only so much you can do, but I'm sure I'll come back to this later as I get some more time. And I'm especially going to be coming back to it the longer that TTSA leaves our copy strike on my Who's Lube content. Y'all want to play hardball? I'll make a Who's TTSA or a Who's Tom or a Who's Tom's girl or, you know, PR manager or what's going on? Who's Hal? Who's uh, Jim? Uh, who else do we need to make? A, we could start a whole series of Who's movies if y'all want to watch them uh, and just go right up the line of this group if that's what it's going to take. But um, for now, um, you know, I hope that, that you guys pick something up, not only some information about TTSA, but some information about methods and how to go out and look for this information on yourself, how you can figure it out for yourself when you're looking at these things you know, and what some of this stuff means. And the more you look at it, the more it'll make sense to you. If something doesn't make sense, Google it and figure out what it is. Don't stop there. Don't be deterred. Keep your nose to the grindstone and you can figure all this stuff out just like I did. Nobody out there is, we're all people. We're all have the same strengths and weaknesses and anyone can do this stuff. You just got to have the confidence and the determination. And um, so, yeah. I, I look I look forward to seeing what some of you guys come up with on some of this. If you want to uh, see how I found it, remember you go to the SEC page and you type in to the Stars Academy for the title of the company. Or you can also go to the Corporation Wiki, which is another good one that you saw in the Truth Seekers video. And you can type in the name of Mr. Tom D. Long. Ah, and you're going to see his companies here as well. There's his R2 dogs, Boxcar Racer Inc. to the stars. Everyone loves me. Poo Poo Butt Inc. Tom, you jag off. Did you really name a company Poo Poo Butt? Yes, sir. In California in the 90s. Poo Poo Butt. What a clown. What a clown. I mean, seriously. What was his other business called? Like good in bed? <laughs> Here's the cloud that you're going to see, the cloud representation. And this is one of the reasons I like Cor Corporation Wiki because it gives you this breakdown and it just shows you that right here. Look, here's Tom DeLong. He's tied into Poo Poo Butt. Po Production feeds into Tom DeLong. Mr. Hampson feeds into Tom DeLong. My Products feeds into Tom DeLong. R2 Dogs feeds into Tom DeLong. RIP Properties LLC. Whoa, wait. Is, let me guess. RAP Properties. There's the lease. There's the $100,000 lease he had to let himself out of with his PPP money. I bet. Ugh. Maybe not. I mean, I'm just speculating here. I have no idea what that is. I'm just clowning. <laughs> here we got to the Stars Inc. dumping into DeLong. Chloe the Dog LP. Dumping into Everyone Loves Me Incorporated, which dumps into DeLong. Love Movie LLC dumps into Everyone Loves Me Inc. Dumps, dumps into Tom DeLong. Archive West Investments, Tom DeLong. My Films LLC and Reissued, Tom DeLong. Viking Wizard Eyes LLC, Confidential TDI Incorporated. Ooh, I've heard that name. Where the hell have I run over that before? I've run across Confidential TDI before. Oh, let's get that off of there. 
Viking Wizard Eyes, Toho Productions, and Boxcar. So there's another one that you got. There's another tool that you have to help you guys find this. You've got Corporation Wiki. You've got Google. And um, you've also got the sec.gov. And then when you start looking at these companies, you're going to want to go to the Secretary of State at whatever country. Excuse me. <clears throat> You want to go to the Secretary of State for whatever state that these uh, companies were incorporated in and go to their business and LLC lookup and look for those companies in those states. And that will give you the name of the individual who set the company up. So there's some follow-up work to do there. But there's a lot of information in here. I hope everybody enjoyed watching it. I hope everybody enjoyed hanging out. I enjoyed going over it with everyone because I've been wanting to go over this stuff for a very, very long time. But I haven't had time to do a dedicated TTSA video with all the work that I put into to who's Lou. Um, but here it is. TTSA, Scott Hernandez asks, what's the bottom line? In my opinion, TTSA is not worth investing a single nickel in. I, I wouldn't. And if anybody out there has, and they, they have got some money back, please tell me, please tell me if you've made a penny off your stock, I would love to hear your story because from where I'm sitting on paper, it looks like Eventually, they're going to slough the investors and To The Stars Academy Incorporated is going to roll over into To The Stars Incorporated, which are two different entities that look almost identical on paper, except for one's a corporation, one's an LLC, one's To The Stars, one's To The Stars Academy. And I've never heard of legitimate businesses doing that type of branding, bait and switch. The only time I've heard of this type of stuff going on is when it's shady when they're trying to get rid of the investors and the people who bought the stocks but keep the brand intact and hope the public doesn't notice well it's too late DeLong. i already noticed ain't gonna happen so we'll go back over some of this stuff too soon if anybody's got any questions email me real area five at area 503 at gmail.com um for the, for now i'm pretty much just going to kind of rest on ttsa but i'll be poking and looking at them a little bit more as time goes on um, I'll try to find that filing where Tom DeLong wrote off the debt uh, with the film, and then I can post that for you guys too. So that when people tell you, "Oh, what's a, why do you got a, a you know why are you so hard on TTSA?" Because they're a fraud, man. Why shouldn't I be? The thing's all leveraged to to go right to Tom DeLong's pocket, and that's it. You know, now you got Jim Semivan and some other people like Hal put off getting a little chunk of the cheddar too. But for the most part, nobody's getting squat but Tommy. And on top of getting his third childhood paid for so shoot me some questions if you guys got them otherwise i will catch you all on the flip side you'll see me around the live streams like i've been doing and expect some big news about some big news about who's lou coming up here soon too because that's just getting started we're going to be pushing hard on lou to get some answers and i know that everyone out there's been really supportive even people who disagree with me about lou have been supportive i love it you know who you are, and the people who are being trolls know who they are. So, attaboy to some, and the rest of those people can just take a long walk off a short pier. We're, we're moving forward, all of us, together, to get this thing answered. And then we're not going to stop once that's done. We're going to keep going for full disclosure. Not this neutered form of disclosure that Lou wants, that where we get propulsion tech and weapons no we're going to get the cure for cancer we're going to get the zero point energy we're going to get the traversable wormholes and we're going to bring everybody on board not just the elite anymore everybody's going to have a chunk of this pie if i have anything to say about it they will so that's where we're at be good to each other until the next time we talk be good to each other and be good to yourself we're all on this game together we all live in this we all live on this planet together. And as much as we have differences, it seems sometimes, we have far more in common with each other than we do indifferent. So the sooner people realize that we're all just one big family living in one big house together, they'll start to get along. We have to get along. We don't have a choice. So be kind, have fun, stay well, and I'll see you all next time.